National Broadcasting Company. Now in its sixth decade of bringing you baseball's memories. Baseball's milestones. Baseball's majesty. Magical moments. NBC Sports proudly presents the Major League Baseball Game of the Week. Today, from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, it's the Houston Astros versus the Atlanta Braves. The Game of the Week is brought to you by Miller Highlight. Miller made the American way since 1855. By Nestle Crunch. Chocolate is scrunches when it crunches. That's why you love Nestle Crunch. By U.S. Navy. Live the adventure. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? The calendar says it's fall, but the thermometer tells a different story. Temperatures in the low 90s as the Braves host the Astros. A pair of right-handers, David Palmer for Atlanta and Danny Darwin for Houston. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Costas. On the telecast today, we're going to focus in on the Astros, speculate about their playoff chances against the Mets, and kind of give you a bit of a scouting report. To get things started, here's Tony Kubek down on the field with Nolan Ryan. All right, thanks, Bob. Noli, over your 19-year Major League career, the word awesome, as far as pitching performance, has probably been used more than with any other pitcher. And yet, when you guys clinched those last three games, Scott, you with the 12 strikeouts, and, of course, Deshaies, those were three awesome pitching performances. Well, I think that uh, it kind of represented the type of pitching that we had gotten this year. And um, we'd gone through a little spell there where we weren't scoring many runs, and uh, we weren't just putting it weren't putting together well as a club and it just happened that we got three back-to-back uh, -back performances that were outstanding performances and I think that uh, uh, they were as good of performances as we've had all year. Apparently your arm problem is okay now. You had a little elbow problem for a while. You were disabled but it must be okay now. Well I wish it were. Uh, it's just one of those situations that it hadn't improved but it hadn't gotten any worse and uh, I've been able to as long as I stay around 100 pitches been I've been effective with it and we really haven't gone over that and so uh, it has worked out over the really the past two months, two and a half months. You are scheduled to pitch game number two in the dome at this point. That's the way we have it set up right now. What about uh, playing the Mets and going back and playing them? Uh, is, is it a special trophy thrill because they were your team? Well, anytime I go into Shea Stadium, I get uh, it, it has a special meaning to me. I have fond memories of it. But as far as the Mets themselves. Uh, that's a completely different organization than it was uh, when I came in there 19 years ago. Um, there really aren't any people left there that uh, were there during the time I was. So when you go in there, it brings back fond memories, but uh, playing the Mets really doesn't mean anything special to me. Talk a little bit about Mike Scott quickly. Do you think that, and he's a strong, strong candidate for the Cy Young Award in the National League, do you think the know-it performance to finish the season for him or for you guys really will assure him the Cy Young Award? Well, I think that that's going to bring him the recognition that he probably needed for people to truly consider him. I think he's the most dominating pitcher in the National League. I haven't been able to view Roger Clements uh, in the American League this year, but I think there's only been two games that Mike has given up more than three runs, and I don't think you can go back and say there's any other pitcher in baseball that's accomplished that. And I think the only reason that people haven't looked at him uh, more so is the fact that uh, his one loss record. Uh, isn't better, and that's not his fault. It's the fact that uh, he got poor support at times. Noli, good luck to you, and thank you so much. Good luck the rest of the way. We'll be back to Atlanta with the starting lineups right after this message.
Miller contains no additives or preservatives. Purity you can see, quality you can taste. Miller's made the American way. This sporty vehicle offers so much variety, it fits right in with today's active lifestyles. The Ford Bronco 2. It's a hit with the jet set, and the wet set, the trail set, and the sail set, the tow set, the snow set, the angler set, and the wrangler set. And now, you get air conditioning free when you buy a Bronco 2 with a special value package. Now get 2.9 financing or up to $750 cash back direct from Ford, depending on model. I don't need drugs. I believe in me and my ability. I don't want anything interfering with the way I play the game. Cocaine's no way to believe in yourself. Hey, it can kill you. If you're into cocaine, get off it. You're living a lie. Get off it while you still have a life. Cocaine, the big lie. Call 1-800-662-HELP. Furnished by Major League Baseball in cooperation with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Hi, I'm Charlie Kerfield, the Western Division champion Astros. Here to play the Atlanta Braves on Saturday in Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Trust leading off, bat, bat first leading off, playing center field will be Tony T-Bone Walker. In the second hole, we got Craig Reynolds playing shortstop. In the third hole, we got Denny Wallen playing third base. Probably one of our best surprises this year, and he's a little bit excited because they got Clemson in town too, so he might not be out here for the game. In the four hole, we got Jose Chop Chop Cruz. In the fifth hole, we got Dan Dreeson just come up to help us out. In the sixth hole, we got probably got the best backup second baseman around, Jim Pankovich. He's going to be batting six. In the seventh hole, we got Terry Poole playing right field. Eighth hole, making his major league debut today, starting catcher Robbie Wine. Just give me ten. I'm sure, y'all know his dad, Bobby. In the ninth hole, we got Danny Darwin just traded over from the Milwaukee Brewers. And Danny uh, Darwin will pitch today, as Charlie Kerfeld noted, trying to improve on a September record of 16 and 8, really 16 and 7, up until the point where they clinched on Thursday against the Giants. So when they had to really put it to the floor, they did. And the key time for them, perhaps, Bob, was in April. Remember, under Bob Lillis and previous managers, they were just an atrocious team coming out of spring training. They went 14 and 6 to get the jump because Hallenier worked them harder in spring training and he also went with a three-man rotation for about a month and some people thought it would tire the rotation out but they really needed that early hell in air he has changed the personality of this ball club they're more running team the fact that he used his big three scott and nepper up front so frequently on three days rest early in the season makes him feel good coming into the playoffs ryan the third because if he has to go with just three pitchers against the Mets and give Scott three starts should it go seven and one four and seven and use the others Nepper and Ryan twice with three days rest in between he feels he can do it. Well Nepper's a guy they're giving a lot of extra rest now he has struggled lately he figured earlier to be the number two pitcher in that league championship series now he's to the three slot Griffey having a good year Murphy would like to move him to right field I believe if they can find a center fielder Albert Hall in right field. Ramirez playing today. Andres Thomas, who's got a world of potential at short. Ken Obergfell playing at second base today. We've got a story that Bob will tell you about with young Hubbard. Horner at first. Ozzie Virgil behind the plate. And the right-hander, David Palmer. Palmer has a record of 11-9 and nine and an ERA of 3.70. Good strikeout pitcher. He's fanned 156 in 195 innings of work, but he also walks too many. He's walked an even 100. So that comes out to between four and five per nine innings pitched, and that'll occasionally get him in trouble. He's twice had elbow surgery during his career, missed the entire 1983 season because of it while on the roster of the Expos, won seven each of the last two years with Montreal, then became a free agent, and the Braves signed him. In each of the last six seasons, including this one, he has been at one time or another on the disabled list. Out of the Montreal chain, they thought his career might be finished several times with the severe elbow problems. You can see he's got that front stiff leg, the delivery. And if you take July out of his year, like so many of the other Braves, he might have had an outstanding season. Boy, July was just an atrocious year for Chuck Tanner's team. 
the Braves were 7 and 19 for Tanner in July and they played some tough clubs in that stretch and they might have been over their heads. They're actually one over 500 the rest of the year when you pull out July. Unfortunately Abner Doubleday decreed that you had to play every month of the season and once July came to a close the Braves began thinking about 1987. And yet the team's record under new general manager Bobby Cox has improved over last year. But they are going to reevaluate again and good chance they'll go out and sign some free agents this year. Tony Walker playing in center field today began the season on the Astros roster then was sent to Tucson back up in September not eligible for the playoffs. There are only three players starting for Hallinier that figure to be in the opening day lineup against Dwight Gooden Reynolds Walling and Cruz. He's going to play two or three every day for a while, and in the last few days of the season, he will play them all to keep them sharp. Mike Scott, by the way, has one more start, either Wednesday or Thursday at Candlestick. So he can't be a 20-game winner. He's 18 and 10 now. But he can pass 300 strikeouts. Needs just two more. Good breaking ball for a called strike. All the talk about Scott's division-clinching no-hitter. The man on the mound, David Palmer, in a sense, has a no-hitter in his background. This one is driven to right on the run, Albert Hall, and he makes the catch on the warning track, crossing the foul line to do it. Hall is a natural center fielder and has had occasional defensive problems in right, but he made a nice play there. Some of the bright young prospects for the Braves, the Harpers, the Perrys, and Hall, haven't really lived up to their potential off three, four years ago. They've struggled in the minor leagues. Brad Comins, who was one of their bright-looking young stars, he broke a finger yesterday, may not play the rest of the year. Just haven't developed the way they thought they would. Palmer, as you may recall, pitched that rain-shortened perfect game, five innings at St. Louis in 1984. And technically, it goes into the record books as a perfect game, although they do list it separately from the nine-inning efforts. Craig Reynolds, a platoon player, along with Dickie Thon, who plays against left-handed pitchers. So Thon figures to play what in game number two is Ojeda's scheduled for Davey Johnson game two. They also platoon at third base, Walling and Garner. Garner will probably play in game number two against Ojeda. Talked to Hal Lanier about it yesterday. He plans no changes against the lefties, Thon and Garner against the righties, Reynolds and Walling. Fastball called strike three. Ed Montague behind the plate and Lee Wire was there yesterday and where the pennant race over here there are some individual numbers that people would like to accomplish but the strike zone might get a little bit wider today. Right on the black says Ed Montague. Well last night Doyle Alexander came within one out of pitching mm -hmm. a shutout and had it ended at that point it would have been a two hour game as it was the Astros rallied for four in the top half of the ninth before the Braves finally closed it out and won it 5-4 with Zane Smith getting the save for Alexander. Strike one to Walling who quietly has had the year of his life platooning with Garner at third base. Walling has been the better of the two with the glove. That's bounced foul Matt Galanti in the first base coaching box. That's a little bit of a surprise. Walling was a man who they had difficulty finding a position for him. First base, outfield, third base. Boy, he has thrown some numbers on the board. 57 runs batted in. Mm. And he's made just eight errors in the field while Garner has booted 23, which is uncharacteristic for him. You know, Garner hit home runs early, though. That month of April, it seemed like every time you looked up, he was hitting home runs to give the club a leader win a ball game. And that really gave them the juice. A very uh, experienced player like he is. 1-2 pitch. Shallow left. Thomas drifts back from shortstop. A 1-2-3 first for David Palmer. To the bottom half in Atlanta. And we'll be right back. Thirty-year-old Danny Darwin, a native Texan, faces this Atlanta lineup. Hall, Obergfell, Murphy, Horner, Griffey, Ramirez, Virgil, Thomas, and Palmer, of course, the pitchers. So unlike the Astros, Chuck Tanner going with more familiar names except for Albert Hall at the top. 
Cruz Walker, Terry Poole, who when he was injured early, gave Hatcher a chance to play more. Walling, Reynolds, Pankovitz, Dorn will be there in the first game. Dreesen, it'll be Glenn Davis in the lineup, 30 home runs. Robbie Wine, what a thrill for him. His first major league start catching Darwin tonight. Switch hitter Albert Hall takes high and outside. Darwin began the year with Milwaukee. He was 6-8 and eight with the Brewers. Had won eight games for them each of the previous three seasons. Also had been with the Texas Rangers earlier in his career. As you see, he's 3-2 and two in an Astro uniform. And one of those victories was a big one. He pitched a complete game 6-1 win on the 17th of this month against the Reds. And that was when the Reds were trying to catch the Astros in the race. So Darwin, even if he does nothing else, contributed that night. He can be tough on right-handed hitters. And now that he has come up with a fork ball, he learned that when he was with Milwaukee, perhaps George Bamberg, who just retired, taught him that Staten Island sinker that they're calling a fork ball now. But that's helped him against left-handed hitters, Bob. And he might be very important. Now that you're in seven games of the league championship series, remember the importance for Dick Hauser's Royals against Toronto when they were down 3-1 to one of Steve Farr, Charlie Lebrant, and Gubaza coming on in long relief. Very, very important. And that will probably be Darwin's role. The decision for Lanier has been complicated by the fine outing mm -hmm. by Jim Deshays this week. Prior to Deshays' terrific performance against the Giants, you would have thought for sure that uh, he would have gone with only three starters in the playoffs. Now he might use Deshays in the fourth game at Shea Stadium. It depends what happens in the first two or three. If Houston gets behind early to the Mets in that series, he will come back with Scott on three days rest. If they have a two-to-one lead, he probably will go to Shays. He'd like a left-hander in the bullpen. He's got Calhoun, but he likes to Shays stuff a little bit better. Hall pops the three-two pitch up, left side of the diamond, and Walling has it at third base. I should correct myself. Deshays' performance on Tuesday was against the Dodgers. Final game of that series. Then the Giants came in, and Ryan and Scott went to work on them. An incredible stretch which you probably read about, but it deserves a review. In three consecutive games on Tuesday night, Deshays struck out a record eight consecutive men to open the game and wound up throwing a two-hitter against the Dodgers. The next night against the Giants, Ryan has a no-hitter for six, leaves after eight, having yielded just one hit. Kerfeld gave them another one in the ninth as he finished, and then Scott pitched the no-hitter and struck out 13 the next day. 27 innings, four hits allowed by the Houston staff with 35 strikeouts in that stretch. Fouled off by Obertfell, 0-2. Mike Scott, all he's done is going to lead the league at ERA. That 2.25 is about a half a run better than anybody else in the National League. Oh, he does second at 2.71. Show you the overpowering year, and he's going to get his 300 strikeouts. The 0-2, fastball up high. If he strikes out two Giants in his next start and does pass the 300 plateau, he'll be the first National Leaguer to do it since J.R. Richard of the Astros. He fanned 313 in 1979. I think JR's in the midst of writing a book. Read something about it. Tells how Jimmy Yule, the trainer emeritus, saved his life when he had the stroke. Oberfell reaches for it and sends it deep but foul down the right field line. Obi is playing today because Glenn Hubbard came to the ballpark and he had a little irregular heartbeat. They took him to the emergency room at the hospital here, Piedmont Hospital for a precautionary EKG. The report is a good one. No underlying evidence of heart disease. So he's given some medication. He may start tomorrow. He had a similar problem last year in October. It's softly in the center, and it falls in front of Walker. A one-out hit for Overton. Perhaps the steadiest of the Braves this year. He's had a good year from April right on through September. Now here's Murphy with numbers that would please almost anyone else beneath the standards he's established. The two-time MVP has driven in over 100 runs several seasons in succession. He won't make it this year. Well, they have had difficulty finding a leadoff hitter for this ball club. Obert Fowl will be a good number two hitter, pulling the ball a little bit when he wants to. You don't get a leadoff hitter on, you're not going to pitch to Dale Murphy, and he goes in those streaks where he swings at any kind of breaking ball outside. This year will snap a string of four consecutive seasons over 100 RBIs for Murph. With his bat, 
And of course, he is an outstanding defensive player. Throws well, runs well. I still think they'll want to move him to right field if they can find the center field. Maybe he'll come in a trade or through free agency to try and relieve a little bit of the strain of having to chase balls down in the gaps. A little easier to play right field with that foul line to your left. Chuck Tanner told me yesterday that if the season, the 87 season, were to open tomorrow, and believe me, the Braves need some time off, but if it were to open tomorrow, Murphy, Harper, and Griffey would be his outfield trio. Swing and a miss and a good fastball from Danny Darwin for the second out, and yet they have some decisions to make. They acquired Darryl Motley for minor league pitcher Steve Shields this week from Kansas City. What are they going to do with Kamins? Gerald Perry, who can play outfield or first base, had a big season at Richmond. Hit 326 there. Well, they've got to re-sign Bob Horner. Doyle Alexander, who pitched well last night, has pitched well since they got him from Toronto. His contract is up. He negotiates for himself. He'll be tough, I would think. Horner hit his 25th last night against Matt Keough. Four of those 25, of course, in one memorable game against the Expos here this season. That was a little bit of the start of the uh, Braves slide. He had four home runs. They lost that ball game to the Braves. The next day they had three. They lost that ball game, and it just kept snowballing. They kept going downhill. Look at the team's ERA and run production. Up until July, they were good in almost every area, and they were right there around a game behind the leaders. And then it just all fell apart. They went into Shea for that series in July and just were blown away. Not only were they swept, they were outscored something like 25-3, mm -hmm. to three and... The decline was well underway at that point. Breaking ball called strike, one and two. Interesting article this morning, uh, David Kindred, who writes for one of the Atlanta papers, talking about what ball players go through. And just not the at-bats and the pressures and the family problems. Bob Horner mentioned prominently in the article with his brother, to whom he had given a bone marrow transplant, dying this season, and Bobby going back in the dugout on the phone, finding out how is he, and... It, People don't understand. You know, babies are born and all. I thought it was just a marvelous written article by David Kindred today. The expectations when you're making a million dollars, Bob, they want you to be perfect all the time. And yeah, some players may be overpaid, but you expect perfection for those kinds of dollars they're being paid. Taken high, two and two. Griffey is on deck. Obert fell at first with two out in the bottom of the first. No score. The veteran Dreesen, who has seen postseason action with the Reds, not eligible in Houston. He's trying to salvage his career in the Astro organization. Breaking ball hit hard and backhanded by Walling. He'll have no play as he slips down. Rule of the hit for Horner. He looks to second and even had he maintained his footing he could not have gotten Obergefell there and the throw would have been too long to get Horner even though Bob runs very slowly his bat was always a good one he's proven it this year and his glove as you indicated has improved he wasn't going to get anybody anyway you know they all the matchups the boy that switch with the first two games being in the Western Division ballpark is a big one the first two played in the dome. I guess there's a football conflict, and teams come into that dome, and the hitters don't see the ball. Ball doesn't carry when they turn the air conditioning, so it gets colder in there. The record shows it. Uh, the Astros have done artificial surface fields. They're 70 and 41 on grass fields. They're 19 and 24. And what you're talking about is the first two are in the dome. And that might be the little edge that is needed. In addition, the Astros are five and seven head to head with the Mets this year, but four and two against them in Houston, one and five at Shea Stadium. It makes a definite difference that through the schedule shift, the Astros picked up the additional home game. If it goes seven, four of them will be in Houston. I would think that the Frank Cash and the President General Manager would have been incensed, of course, he couldn't change it. Oh and two to Griffey. 
It gets away from Robbie Wine. Will probably be a wild pitch. He got a glove on it, but it was very high. Wine, as Tony mentioned, making his first major league start behind the plate. He has played some off the bench. He has tremendous physical tools. Darwin throws a couple of different kinds of fastball. He sinks the ball a lot, gets ground balls. That looked like he went with a four-seamer and ran it. And perhaps not knowing Darwin's style, Robbie Wine was fooled by the movement on the fastball. But he's going to be a good one. Don't know how much he'll hit, but he can already catch in the big leagues. It is a wild pitch, and the one-two is a line drive caught at second base by Pankovic. So the Braves strand a couple. No score after one in Atlanta. You remember the Tommy Lasorda quote, one that has come back to haunt him. In late June, he said, the Astros are just renting first place. Well, it turned out to be a full year's lease. Jose Cruz, Chao, came out of spring training with a bad ankle. He was disabled. All those little things gave other people chances to play. Hatcher got a chance to play done a brilliant job in center field. He's been leading off recently, doing a good job. They could move Kevin Bass to right, took the pressure off him. So they worked a lot of people in. And Helen Ears, certainly, who learned it right from Whitey Herzog in that big ballpark in St. Louis, used the entire 24-man roster. Dick Wagner coming up with a key trade here and there, a key player. Whitey called Helen Ears, his buddy, to congratulate him as soon as the Astros clinched. Tapped out in front. Here's Palmer. Tossing over to Horner, and Lanier has always been very free with his praise for Whitey, speaking of how much he learned from him. Another who tutored Lanier, Ralph Howe. After playing so long with the Giants as one of their infielders, 60s and early 70s, he went over to the Yankees to finish up, and Hauk was the manager there and had quite an influence on him. His biggest tutor of all was, and his mentor and a great lineage was Pops. Former Major Leaguer Max Lanier. What a thrill it was for him to see his first managerial job this year. He was there with the family, and I'm sure he was there for the clincher also. Dreesen was cut by the Giants early this year, picked up by the Astros, went to Tucson, hit almost 300 there, trying to salvage his career. And as you see, since his early September recall, he's done well in Houston, 10 for 32. Well, that's the big Wagner connection with Cincinnati. Wagner, of course, there. Bob Housen for the Big Red Machines. Dreesen was a part of that. Then Glenn Davis had a little back problem, and they got him and brought him up, and he played a little bit and did a nice job. Good breaking ball. Caught him looking. Palmer has a good slider and a good curveball. Atlanta tried earlier this year with Johnny Sanders, the pitching coach, going with a four-man rotation. And with his arm problems it actually strengthened his arm coming out of spring training palmer liked it some of the other pitchers couldn't handle it hankovitz grounds one down toward first it stays fair and horner takes it unassisted palmer has retired six in a row to the bottom of the second in steamy atlanta where the game time temperature was 94. 44-year-old Hal Lanier, Dad Max, pitched in three World Series for the Cardinals in the 40s. Hal coached in a couple in St. Lou in 82 when they beat the Brewers in 85 when they just lost out to Kansas City. And now he's got a chance to manage in one if he can get by the Mets in what figures to be a terrific playoff series. We were talking about his relationship with Whitey Herzog. Whitey trying to keep his sense of humor, despite Marv Albert's point of view. <laughs> through a very tough season as Ramirez swings at the first one and pops it up. Shading his eyes is Reynolds. He's got it in shallow center. Whitey's team led the National League in runs scored along the way to a pennant in 85, and you know how feeble their attack has been this year. Whitey quipped, I might be the only manager ever to skipper a club in the lively ball era and the dead ball era in consecutive seasons. <laughs> well, when Dick Wagner compiled his list of approximately 90 potential candidates, for the managerial job. The clincher was when Wagner called Whitey Herzog during the league championship last year and said, Whitey, you got a minute? And Whitey said, I got all the time you want. I think it was game five or six. And Wagner said, what about this kid Lanier you've got? And Whitey said, he's ready to manage right now. And that was the clincher. That endorsement by Herzog got Lanier the job. Darwin's 1-0 pitch to Virgil. Breaking ball is in there, one and one. Virgil has some pop. He has 14 home runs, but his batting average down at 220.
fastball threw it by him. Bob, living in New York, do you feel that a lot of people's opinions changed as to whom would dominate the East, uh, the, the National League Championship Series? I mean, for three and a half, four months, it was like nobody can meet the Mets. And all of a sudden, and like three pitching performances, awesome ones at that, everybody say, hey, wait a second, I think this team does have a chance with Ryan and DeShays the way he pitched and Smith out of the bullpen and Scott and Nepper. And all of a sudden, the credibility has crept up on everybody for this Houston team. It's been pitching. It's been the big brunt of it, though. One other thing, as good as Dwight Gooden has been, and he goes for his 17th tonight for the Mets, as good as he has been, he has not been as invincible as he was a year ago. Last year, if you thought about the possibility of Gooden pitching three times, you'd have to count at least two of those as wins and maybe three. Now, head-to-head -head with Mike Scott, I'm not so sure that you wouldn't give the edge to Scott. It'd be a slim edge, but it would be there. A bouncer to short. Reynolds. Thomas can run. Got him by half a step. So Darwin works a perfect second, and after two, still no score. Back after this from your local station. It's a season premiere of Hunter. Think of me as a challenge. I'm charging you with attempted murder. Is it a love triangle or a setup? That's why you got a partner. Hunter. Commitment to excellence from News 5. Because you deserve something more. A lot of you out there don't believe superglues work. Take it from me. I'm Harry Coover. I invented superglue. And this new stuff really works. It's Duro Quick Gel with MTS. More thick, more quick, more stick. You work better on more things than ordinary super glues. Duro Quick Gel with MTS. There's no other super glue like it. Right, George? Right, Harry. Available at these fine stores. Huge delight. I'm gonna get some. That's right. Pure delight. Gonna get some. I'm gonna get some. It's gonna be. Beautiful Brewing Company, Cincinnati, Ohio, and proud of it. When you think the minor be discount muffler, I'm not going to pay a lot for this muffler. You're not going to pay a lot for your muffler. I'm not going to pay a lot for this muffler. I'm not going to pay a lot for this muffler. Meineke's the nation's discount muffler leader. We'll fix our car the right way at the right price from 1893 installed. Oh, I'm not going to pay a lot for this muffler. You're not going to pay a lot at Meineke. Reds and Padres, tonight at 10. Switch hitter, terrific leadoff man. Good pivot man on the DP. And some have suggested that he'll get MVP support. I can't see him winning it, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him finish in the top five or six. Well, if there's an MVP that's a position player on this team, it's Glenn Davis for the assertion of his bat. A legitimate power hitter, something they haven't had much of in Houston, really changed the makeup of the lineup. And to the speed of Hatcher, the on-base percentage of Doran. It's been one of those where you can truly say that 24 guys have contributed. Aurelio Lopez, when they got him, when Smith was having some arm problems, Kerfell was on the disabled list. He filled in. Anderson has done a good job out of the bullpen. Terry Poole leads off in the third, and the veteran takes down and in for a ball. He's had that recurring hamstring injury that seems to put him on the DL year after year. Pinch hit roll for him in the playoffs, and maybe if they made it as far as the World Series, DH use in the American League Park. Tap foul. You mentioned Davis, another of the regulars not in there. 30 homers, 97 RBIs. Second in the league in homers. Fourth in runs batted in. It looks like Schmidt with 37 homers and 118 RBIs will lead the league in both categories. And I be begin to believe that he's become the odds-on guy for MVP. Here's Thomas. My vote. And he got it. Yeah. Seven straight, retired by Palmer. 
The Mets lead the National League in team batting average. Houston is third, but the Mets have scored over 100 more runs than the Houston Astros. And they've hit at this time 20 more home runs on the season. There's Dad looking on. Fine defensive infielder for the Phillies primarily in his big league career. Somebody's going to get a good manager when they look in his direction, Bobby Wine. Mom may be too nervous for this first at bat starting a game for Robbie. She left. Base hit. Hey. Second big league hit for Wine in his sixth at bat. He singled in his first major league at bat at Wrigley Field off Cub left hander Guy Hoffman. A subdued reaction, but you know he's happy. You think he didn't throw young Robbie a lot of batting practice when he was growing up, even though he traveled a lot? Up steps Darwin for his 12th major league at bat. He had been with Texas and Milwaukee in the DH American League. He has one big league hit. That was a bunt. I, I'm not knocking it. <laughs> I'm not knocking it. Beat out a bunch. Shows he's got great running speed. Oh, I thought you were pointing out that that last attempt was a no, bunt. No, 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 no. I thought perhaps this only was a clinic was a for bunt. beginners. <laughs> the 0-1. This will be a bunt, too, but he also <laughs> missed it. Toronto and Boston, the second inning. Scoreless. That's Clancy against Hurst. Barfield with that home run in the 12th inning. American League leading. Now the 0-2. He'll try it again and let it go by with a breaking pitch. One and two. Wine, who singled for the Astros' first hit off Palmer, is at first base with one out. Top half of the third, no score. He's squaring, and he bunts foul to record a strikeout, the third for Palmer. Almost everything that David Palmer throws breaks away from a right-handed hitter. Remember Dick Donovan years ago? Didn't seem like he could throw a ball that went from left to right. Palmer has the unique no-trade clause in his contract. It prohibits a deal with one team and one team only. He doesn't want to go back to Montreal. Send him anywhere else, but you can't send him to the Expos, at least not without his approval. Speaking of the Braves and Expos, there are some who speculate that Andre Dawson or Tim Raines are in their wildest dreams. Both might wear Atlanta uniforms next year. Each can be a free agent. The Braves are known to be interested. The question is, are the owners around baseball truly interested in making it the kind of free agent market it once was? Well, I saw a list in Detroit two days ago sent out by the Players Association. At this point, there are just over 100 potential free agents, and there are some names on it. Jack Morris, Lance Parrish, the two Bob mentioned, on and on. Ernie Witt, left-handed hitting catcher. Jim Clancy, right-handed pitcher having a good year. Tom Roberts reinstated as the arbitrator in the alleged collusion apparently will have a decision within a couple of weeks which could be earth shattering for owners if ruled against them I don't know what the penalties could be but there'd be some fines levied I would think and whatever else one and one the count breaking ball a foot and a half outside the strike zone completely fooled Walker and yet you think about it suppose they find that the owners were guilty of collusion and thus Kirk Gibson and a few others this past year curiously received no significant offers. What are they going to do? Twist their arms and make them bid? Breaking pitch, tap foul. No, I just wonder, though, if it goes to a federal judge, which it probably would, as the Sites decision did, upheld by a federal judge in Kansas City, and then if you start talking about violation of antitrust laws, there have been some monumental corporations, a lot bigger than baseball, have fi been fined massive sums of money for price fixing, holding wages down, and other violations of antitrust laws. And it could be a sticky, years-long litigation scene. Just what baseball and sports oh. in general needs more of, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you, it's, it's one of those, and it's such a long way down the road, and it may be far-fetched. It's one of those that could shut down the game for a while. 
don't know if that would ever happen, but boy, there are those kinds of possibilities, and owners and players alike are very aware of that. Walker may be the best defensive outfielder they have for the Houston Astros. What'll he hit, though? They've got a kid named Ty Ganey who has a bright prospect who has struggled in the minor leagues last couple of years, but he's got awesome potential. Probably the worst curse a player can have, huh? Ganey. Awesome potential. Ganey led the Pacific Coast League in hitting. 351 at Tucson. Big, powerful kid. Bounced to third. Oh. Ramirez didn't get down on it. It goes right through his legs. One of the more blatant errors you'll see, to be honest about it. A two-base error it is as Walker winds up at second. There have been long stretches for Chuck Tanner where he has played Ramirez at short and set down the kid Thomas and then played Thomas, set down Ramirez. Ramirez playing today because Obergefell has moved to second base. Needs no analysis. Just went right through the old wickets, huh? Up steps Reynolds, who has hit six homers this year, but several have been timely. He hit a grand slam early this season off Rick Mailer of the Braves, and Chuck Tanner says that's when he began to suspect that it might be the Astros' year. Reynolds had been two for 29 lifetime against Mailer. So despite the fact that Mailer is a right-hander, Tanner left him in in that situation, and Reynolds took him deep. Reynolds also hit one in the ninth at Houston off Roger McDowell to win a game against the Mets in dramatic fashion, five to four. Even though the games mean nothing to the Atlanta Braves, there are some players playing just to stay on this ball club if they like the atmosphere. They're going to make some moves here. Atlanta Braves, they evaluated their talent. All their minor league scouts, managers are here with their seasons done, and they're getting their heads together to get their 40-man winter roster set. Who might be available from other teams or talks behind the scenes? Which players they want to protect and which players just don't fit in their plans for next year. Remember the St. Valentine's Day massacre here? They got rid of a lot of big salaries. The Barkers and the Camps and Pasquale Perez. And Breaking ball line to center. Murphy won't get it. One run scores. Walker coming in. Murphy has trouble with it. No error will be charged as Reynolds holds it first with a couple of RBIs and a 2-0 lead for Houston. If it's any consolation for David Palmer, these are unearned runs. And he that scores subsequently in this inning, also unearned. Here's Walling. Just foul down the left side. One of a few Astros who has postseason experience. Played in that 80 playoff against the Phillies and in 81 the miniseries in the strike year against the Dodgers. Third base coach and hitting instructor Dennis Mankey really helped him. He was the kind of guy who's always had powers. All he got to do is look at his shoulders and his arms and hit the ball to the left center field a lot. And of course now that they've pulled the fences in, two years ago was it, 10 feet all the way around in the dome, the ball carries and he's pulling the ball a little more. And Dennis Mankey has helped him with that. Get that barrel out a little more. Get the right hip out of the way. And he's added to his power production. There's Menke, former Blue Jays coach. Like Bobby Wine, someday I think he will manage in the major leagues and be a good one. The Astros have an unsuccessful but very exciting postseason history. Remember that great three of five series against the Phillies in 1980. Four of the five games, including the last one, went extra innings. And the Phillies eked out a win. 8-7 in the last game in 10 innings. Called strike three, and down goes Walling. Then the next year, in the miniseries against the Dodgers, they won the first two in Houston, then were swept three straight in L.A. to finish the season. Dodgers went on to win the pennant. We'll be back. Ah, draft beer. It's always been the smoothest, freshest beer around. Poured straight from the tap. And now, there's a true draft beer in a bottle. Miller Genuine Draft. It's not heat pasteurized like most bottled beers. It's cold filtered for real draft smoothness. Miller Genuine Draft. Ah, it's beer at its best. Arnold! 
Why hasn't this package been picked up? You call him. I already called him ten times. Hold it. If you had called Federal Express, you wouldn't be having this problem. Come with me. Only Federal trucks have onboard computers. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So our couriers know the instant you have a package for pickup. Uh -huh. So we can pick it up on time. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Next time, call Federal Express. Why fool around with anyone else? I will call Federal, and I'll get you off my back and everybody else off my back. I've been shot at, shot up, and shot down. So I don't take chances on anything. I won't touch a filter that isn't from AC. Why mess with air filters that can't go for up to 30,000 miles? Or oil filters that can't deliver up to 15,000? For the AC Delco retailer nearest you, just give me a call at 1-800-AC-DELCO. If you put your muscle into a job, use your head and do it with AC Delco. Sunday, the NFL plays here when the Seahawks battle the Redskins. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL 86. Congratulations to Gene Walk and the Angels with Brian Downing hitting two home runs and driving home five. They beat Texas last night 8-3 and clinched in the West. And they really did it against their chief competition. They have not lost a game this year to Texas. There's something like 7 or 8-0 and oh against them. Key to that ball club will Candelaria's arm make it through the league championship series. With his arm, they've got a chance, along with Mike Wick and McCaskill. Because Donnie Moore's had some elbow or shoulder problems also. Fourth inning, no score. Bruce Hurst for Boston against Jim Clancy for Toronto. And the number for the Red Sox is three. They can beat the Blue Jays today and tomorrow at Fenway. That's history. Darwin goes to work, and Palmer swings at the first one and pops it up. Palmer isn't a bad hitter, but he's retired this time. Talking about doing it against your chief competition head-to-head, -head, that's been the story for the Astros this year. They were 14-4 and against Cincinnati, including 5-0 and in September when Pete Rose thought he still had a chance if he could stay close. The Reds have no complaint. They simply couldn't get it done in direct competition with Hal Lanier's team. Should Boston win, and it looks like it's just a matter of time, the four teams that will win the division all are sitting in the top two spots in ERA in their respective leagues. I think Kansas City might be in there right along with California and Boston and Team ERA. And we told you a while ago, New York leads the National League in Team ERA, and Houston is second. So it starts and it stops with pitching. If you ain't got pitching, as Sparky once said, you ain't got nothing. And to lead the American League or finish near the top in Team ERA with Fenway as your home ballpark is extraordinary. It's happened only once or twice in the long history of the Red Sox franchise. 3-0 to Albert Hall, who had an embarrassing moment a few days ago against the Padres. In the middle of a three-hit game, he lost what could have been his fourth hit when he missed first base on an apparent triple. There he stood proudly at third. They called for the ball, appealed at first and sent him to the dugout. I understand, though, just as he was going to touch the bag, the first baseman kicked it out of the way, so it really wasn't his fault. Oh, I see. <laughs> the old sandlot trick. <laughs> it's when the base is somebody's shirt. <laughs> he drags a bunt, and it's a good one. In comes Pankovic, no play. They were playing tight at the corners, and Pankovic was shallow, knowing the speed of Albert Hall. It didn't make any difference. As soon as he got it by Darwin, it was all over. Will he be the leadoff hitter that Chuck Tanner and Bobby Cox is looking for next year? Will he play center field and move Murphy to right? That's why they're looking at kids like Paul. He has a regal name. There's no doubt about that. Albert Hall. Obergfell singled his first time. Needs one RBI for a career high. He's driven in 46. Did that one year with the Cardinals. These two managers came into spring training with the same basic philosophy. They wanted to run more, both Lanier and Tanner. Well, Lanier looked at past year's stats when they were competitive three years ago or so, and he had the personnel with the addition of Hatcher to run. Tanner said, I'm going to run, too. They ran all spring training, but during the season, he didn't have the personnel. There he goes, but no, no throw. And that's the eighth 
steal for Hall in just 13 games is being called up. This ball club, including the last steal by Hall, has stolen 90 bases, but they've been caught 73 times. So Chuck Tanner just didn't have the personnel to do what he wanted to do coming out of spring training. Hallelier did. Ramirez is their leader with 19 thefts. Wine couldn't get it out of his glove, and Hall had such a great jump anyway. Obertfeld lifts one into shallow center. Walker got a late start, and making the play going back from shortstop is Reynolds, a heck of a play. That's the second out. Omar Moreno has stolen 12 this year, rather uh, 17 this year for Atlanta, but he's also been caught stealing 16 times, which exemplifies the stat you were talking about. And, and you can't expect to be successful when you're thrown out nearly half the time. And that always shows the desperation of the Atlanta general manager, Bobby Cox, John Mullen, of course, helps them very closely, and Chuck Tanner. They were looking so for a leadoff hitter, they tried to resurrect Moreno's career, get him off the scrap heap. But he gave him a little job for a little while, and then he just faded again. Murphy struck out in the first. See if it stays in for Dreesen, who drifts into foul ground. Plenty of room to make the catch. So a bunt single and a stolen base for Hall, but all for naught in the last half of the third. Three complete, two-nothing Astros. Stereo television. Once you hear how great it sounds on a Zenith, you'll think we invented it. We did. Zenith. Quality. If you want to know, my throat is killing me. It's raw. Rough. Mr. Wyatt is in for a nice, nice surprise. With chloroseptic spray, he's going hurts. to get incredibly fast sore throat relief. I don't know. Because doctor recommended chloroseptic goes to work right where you hurt. But how fast is it? Works so fast that Mr. Wyatt will start to feel relief. Wow, it's... Um, before we finish this commercial. The pain is disappearing. One quick way to put a little fun in your life is this special value Ford Ranger. It comes loaded. Special two-tone paint, special mirrors, chrome rear bumper, tinted glass, luxury interior, interval wipers, AM FM stereo, power steering, and more. Save $972 on this special value Ford Ranger. The price is a low $75.99. That's over $2,000 less than a Toyota SR5. Now get 2.9 financing or up to $600 cash back direct from Ford, depending on model. The top of your TV should be more than just a shelf for your VCR, so Zenith designed a slim, new midsize that does just about everything but take up space. Zenith. Quality. On 1986, this man killed his ex-girlfriend but was acquitted as insane. Do you think Ray Fatsinger got away with murder? Yes. Tuesday on 1986. Now, Tony, talking about the possibility of three Gooden-Scott matchups in the playoffs. Gooden is 16-6, and six, and he's had moments this year where he hasn't pitched well, but his last two outings against the Cubs and Cardinals, he's been close to overpowering. I have a theory about him. He had so much help early from Darling and Ojeda and Fernandez when he was pitching well. I think he finally re he relaxed a little bit, and I think when he has to, as he's showing now, he's going to be his old awesome himself like he was last year and the year before. You know, Mike Scott is just 2-5 and five lifetime against the Mets, but all those decisions before he developed the wicked split-finger fastball. He pitched against them only once this year, and it was a no decision. He took a two-hit shutout into the ninth and a 4 nothing lead in July at Houston. Three Met hits made it 4-2, to two, and they took him out and brought in Dave Smith, and Strawberry hit a game-tying two-run homer off Smith. The Astros then won it in the bottom half on Craig Reynolds' homer against Roger McDowell. So, in truth, in his lone appearance since becoming a new man with that new pitch against the Mets, Scott pitched extremely well. Cruz pops one back. Virgil off with the mask. It's out of play. Well, as Houston shortstop said around the batting cage today before the ball game, he said, I have a hunch in the league championship series, National League, there are going to be a lot of U-turns made by hitters. Up into the batter's box and turn around and go right back to the dugout. The strikeout potential for these two staffs looks like it'll be extremely high, especially with those lights that are a little dim in the dome. Remarkable physical specimen at age 39, Jose Cruz. Hit in the third spot most of his career with Houston. 
when they have their regular lineup in there he's been dropped to sixth the past few months and that's been productive he's sizzled since the all-star break he's hitting cleanup today in this makeshift lineup well he's been a third place hitter for this club the most of his career but the way Kevin Bass has come on Palmer got a piece of it Obergfell backhands wheels and does not get him Horner made a nice scoop at his end as well, but Cruz beats it out. All the Cruz brothers could run. And even at Cheo's age, he still runs well, as you just saw. Oberk fell with a third baseman's arm, couldn't get much on it across the body, but Cheo beats it out. It's been a rough spot defensively. Hubbard's had a rough time defensively and offensively this year. But he's a player that you want out at second base because of his grittiness. Bobby Cox loves him, and he should. Trayson struck out his first time. We wish Hubbard the best. We missed earlier with a little problem he had this morning. Irregular heartbeat mm -hmm. taken to the hospital, but they think he'll be all right. The evidence is no underlying heart disease, and he had a similar occurrence last year and bounced right back. A one pitch in the dirt. You know, it's another interesting aspect of a Scott Gooden matchup. If they are, as anticipated, low-scoring games, you can run on Gooden a little bit. His pickoff move is better than it used to be, but the Astros have some people who can steal bases. Doran, Hatcher, even Lopes when he's in there. And Gooden is not much better than average, if that, at holding people on. There goes Cruz, bouncing ball to short. Thomas broke to cover, gets back to field it, but Cruz is safe at second as Dreesen is thrown out. Gary Carter this year has been able to throw out, what, only about 25% of enemy base stealers. He's had a little bit of trouble with his arm. That's an interesting thing about this Houston team also. We've talked about them being a good turf team, but also they're a team that does not strike out a whole lot. They can start runners, and even though they're third in the league in stolen bases, but so many times, as just now, because they don't swing and miss a whole lot of pitches, throughout the lineup to that, where you can start a runner, you prevent double plays, and that, again, is part of Lanier's game plan coming out of spring training. Bob Nepper is 3-1 and one this year against the Mets. He gives strawberry fits, and it's generally conceded that when you get the Mets' right-handed platoon in there, Tuffle for Backman, Mookie Wilson for Lenny Dykstra, especially Tuffle for Backman. And when you can neutralize Strawberry with a good left-hander, that the Mets are not quite as good a team. Tapped in front, Cruz to third, Palmer fields, and gets the hitter at first. That takes care of Pankovic. But all these things have subplots. Nepper, for example, after starting the season very strongly, has not pitched well at all since mid-August. So maybe the three and one record against the Mets is ancient history. When the teams collide in the playoff, they will not have faced each other for more than two months. Which is why he is scheduled to pitch the third game instead of the second. Ryan comes out hot with a 12 strikeout performance, one hit in seven innings, so he will get the start. And Deshays, who had been slated for long relief, mm -hmm. is rested for 12 days by Lanier and then comes on with the two-hitter against the Dodgers and throws his name back into the hat. Maybe a start in game four. You know, a factor that is not mentioned a lot is what will they do with the air conditioning in the dome? And they have been known to change oh, it. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, they did it against the Dodgers last year. You come out there on the batting cage, everybody's got their coats on. They have taken the air conditioning and make it about 67, 68 degrees, and the ball doesn't carry. But when they juice it up to 71 or 72 the night before, the ball flies out of there. These theories are that's not a so theory. arcane. No, that, that's I... not a theory. It is a fact. <laughs> they have done it. They got an air conditioning system in the dome that can air condition a city of 25,000 people. It takes about, oh, somewhere between 12 and 24 hours to change the temperature. And it has been done there. Amazing. One-two pitch with two out and a man at third. He checks the swing. He rolls it toward Obergfell, and Obi will throw him out. So, Cruz opened with an infield single. He eventually winds up at third, but gets no farther than that. We'll be back. 
And unfortunately, that's the weather picture for tonight. Roger is a weatherman. He knows the difference between little storms and big storms. And recently, when he saw a big one coming, the first place he went was his Honda generator dealer. Hey, you're the weatherman. I need a real good generator. And by the time the storm hit, Roger was prepared. The Honda generator. Because you never know what the weather will bring. Oh, and Beethoven here neglects to tell us his building doesn't have an elevator. Give me a break, you guy. Hey, Mitchell, what was in that piano? Cement or what? What a fiasco. Well, at least he did get us a keg. That was good draft beer. Yeah, well, buying that keg was the only good idea you had that day. When you're drinking new Miller Genuine Draft, it'll remind you of the best beer you ever had. Because it is genuine draft. Cold filtered for real draft smoothness. Miller Genuine Draft. It's beer at its best. I should have hired skilled labor. <laughs> Drivers have come to us. They believe in liberty, liberty, mutual insurance. I'm a safe driver, so I shopped around for car insurance. Liberty Mutual gave me the best protection and saved me money, too. I believe in liberty. America believes in liberty. Sunday, the NFL plays here when the Patriots battle the Broncos. Before your team hits the field, our team hits the air. NFL 86. Doubleheader tomorrow as we cover the NFL on NBC. Seattle and Washington, two 3-0 teams collide at RFK. Kansas City, Buffalo. Pittsburgh, Houston. Boy, oh boy, Chuck Knoll has the headaches with the 0-3 Steelers. New England, Denver. That's the game many of you will see in the second half of the doubleheader from Mile High Stadium. Jets and Colts, Chargers and Raiders, and the Raiders haven't been 0-3 since they opened with five straight losses way back in 1964. Special pregame guest, my Polish friend John Matuszak. That's how you want to pronounce it. <laughs> Horner against Darwin in the bottom half of the fourth with the Braves trailing 2-0. What's he doing now? Is he in wrestling or color analysis or what? I don't know. We'll find out tomorrow. He's still big, I'll tell you that. 0-1 pitch. Breaking ball hit through the hole for a leadoff single. He's been a very steady player for the Atlanta Braves. In fact, he's hit more home runs this year than any other year in his major league career. 20. Nine of those when he's with the Yankees. Nobody was happier than Ken to get out of the zoo. He's tapered off a little bit, but they've played him an awful lot because he's done so well. Richmond won the title in the International League. Roy Matika as their manager, the AAA farm for the Braves. Does that mean help is on its way, or does that mean that they won with veteran players who compete well in that league but aren't big league potential? Well, the Gerald Perrys and the Albert Halls had good years. Brad Commons, who's played some third base here, they expected better power stats from here, hit about 230. He's the guy they were going to put in the middle of the lineup with that big right-handed bat. One, two. Nice play by Dreesen. Score at 3-6. They're looking for pitching, Bob. They had Zane Smith pitched well early from the left side. He's been in the bullpen lately. They're going to have to redo a lot of their pitching staff. The bullpen's been pretty good. Force removed. Tagged by Reynolds. But Garber's done a good job. And remember, they lost Bruce Suter. He had arthroscopic shoulder surgery for the second time to clean it out. He hasn't thrown a ball since then. I think that's about six weeks ago. It'd be nice if they could get him back. Ramirez. Fastball outside and high. Charlie Paleo, the former Met and Red, won 14 during the regular season at Richmond and a couple more in the playoffs. He's here now with the big team. What's Charlie? 30-31. So he's trying to get his career back on the beer, uh, on the uh, beam. 2-0 the count. Took Cliff Speck out of the minor leagues. He was there for 12 and a half years or 12 plus years. So they're really struggling to remold the pitching staff under Johnny Sane. Fouled out of play, two and two. The Braves are 71 and 82. 
They're a half game out of the basement. The Dodgers and Padres each have 71 victories, as do the Braves, each with one more loss. So the objective for Tanner and company, avoid the cellar by year's end. Tanner especially, because if they ended up in the cellar, that'd be the third consecutive year. So you can see that even to one of the most successful managers and well-liked managers in the game, it can happen. Twice with Pittsburgh and maybe here in his first season with the Braves. He's got long-term security, five-year contract. His name was mentioned in the New York papers a couple of weeks ago. It's coming up to New York, wasn't it? Just about everybody's name has been mentioned as they continue to speculate that Lou Pinello will not be back. Five strikeouts for Darwin as Ramirez chased a bad pitch. Back after this from your local station. Sunday, a woman torn between her fantasies and her troubled marriage. Donna Mills, James Brolin, Intimate Encounters Sunday. This is your last chance. 2.9. It's the last chance clearance on all 1986 GMC trucks and vans. 2.9. Get them at your GMC All-Star Truck Dealers, Greninger GMC, and Holman GMC. Last chance. Get 2.9% APR GMAC financing. Plus, when you buy a GMC pickup or S15 Jimmy with gold metal accessory package, you get free air. 2.9. It's the last chance clearance with 2.9% at Greninger GMC and Holman GMC. This house is having people having the ball Laughing and clapping, watching it happen on the HBO Knockout Ball The HBO Knockout Ball is here with blockbuster movies like Rambo, First Blood Part 2, Jagged Edge, and Cocoon HBO exclusives too like Comedy with Rodney and Robin So catch it all On the HBO Knockout Ball To get special savings on HBO installation, call your local cable company today what should you look for in a divorce lawyer? Someone who fights to protect your family and your property. You want someone who cares about you and your case. You want someone who speaks your language, knows divorce law, and understands divorce court. You want someone you can trust and believe in. D.C. Schultz, Lawyers to Remember. Call D.C. Schultz Attorneys at 671-6911 for the office nearest you. Hollywood Squares, weekdays at 5 on Channel 5. Jim Clancy has retired the first 12 Red Sox he's faced today at Fenway, so he's got a perfect game going through four. I just saw him pitch against the Tigers, who've been struggling. The Blue Jays beat them three out of four, and two days ago, about three nights ago, Clancy pitched, and he had 19 consecutive. He had an awesome fastball. He was just all over the place. Maybe another World Series ring for Gene Tennis, who got one in 82 with the cards and, of course, was with the great Oakland teams that won three in a row, 72, 3, and 4. And he had four home runs in the series, including two in his first two at-bats against the Reds in 72. Kerfeld, alongside him, had a great quote a couple of weeks ago. He said, this is our season of destination. Maybe he meant destiny, or maybe he was right. If the destination is the fall classic, they may get there. All he's done is go 11 wins and two losses, an outstanding ERA. I understand. Kerfeld really helped out. He was on the disabled list for a while. They worked him hard up until the All-Star game. He's a strong kid. Can pitch three days in a row, four days in a row. I understand he's got a new T-shirt that he's going to mm. break out for the playoffs. Most fans know he's worn that Jetson T-shirt beneath his uniform as a good luck charm all season long. He has a new one that reads, The Jetsons Invade New York. And he'll have that when they go to Shea. You're a fan of George Jetson, aren't you? Who? You know, meet George Jetson. I, his boy, I, Elroy. I really don't know him. Daughter, Judy. Used to play sax. Jane, his wife. Did he play sax for the Ink Spots years ago? No, they're cartoon oh. characters oh, of the future. Oh, oh. Uh, Two me. and one to Robbie Wine. They lived, you know, several centuries hence. What is the dog's name? Astro. Dog's name was Astro. Good. Which is now, appropriate. Well, wow. <laughs> all these, all year long you've been talking about the T-shirt, and you finally put the connection with Kerfeld and the Jetsons and the dog named Astro. Wow, you're right on the ball, kid. <laughs> it's been taking you a while, hasn't it? And I've got to lead you into it. You know, come to think of it, <laughs> you're right. 
<laughs> do Boy, I the, know about the Jetsons? You're the asking things me. that will dawn on you if, if you just think about them long enough. The three-one pitch, mile-high pop that eventually will settle into Obertfell's glove. So wine is one for two. We showed that Astros bullpen a while ago. Dave Smith was not down there. It's been a blessing with all these complete games. Dave Smith had elbow problems. They were afraid. Little tendonitis, wearing ice packs, but now he's been given the kind of rest that he needs to get ready for the Mets in the League Championship Series. The elbows had plenty of rest. I thought it was interesting that Nolan Ryan said the elbows still bothered him. Uh, Twelve strikeouts with a bad, bad elbow, one hit in seven innings. What if he gets healthy? Who's thrown the ball harder over a longer period of mm. time than he has in the major leagues? Nineteen years throwing the ball, still in the mid-90s at times. Darwin struck out when he bunted foul with two strikes his first time up. You know how many times in his career Nolan Ryan has struck out not 10 in a game. He's done that too many times to count, but 15 or more in a game. How many? 21 times. Koufax did it 15 times in his career. Ryan came close to doing it again this season. He had a 14 strikeout game. There's Nolan with Phil Garner. He was on those Oakland teams. And also on Chuck Tanner's championship Pittsburgh. team in Pittsburgh in 79. Scrap iron. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Breaking ball. It isn't fair to throw a pitcher a pitch like that. Especially one who's just come over from the American League and isn't used to the feel of a bat in his hand. Even though Nolan Ryan was very low key in that pregame interview, he will be so sky high, even though he's a veteran, when he pitches against the Mets, it's going to be incredible. I mean, he is going to be getting the ball up there, and if they can get seven innings out of him strong like he pitched the last time, with the bullpen they've got, mm, I don't know. You think the, uh, the, the bullpen of this ball club stronger than the Mets with more depth? Both teams, they get so many complete games and go into the eighth inning with the strength of their starting staff. Perhaps the bullpen won't even come into play. But with seven games, you know it's going to be a big part. With Kerfal, if the Shays is down there, was Smith backing up with a healthy elbow? I'm not so certain that over a seven-game series that this team might have a better bullpen. Well, I think the real key is if they move Deshaies to the bullpen, that gives them the left-hander there, the real mm -hmm. quality left-hander that they lack. Over the course of the season, you might lean toward the Mets because of the left-right punch with Orozco, who's pitching very well now, and McDowell, the sinker ball mm -hmm. specialist, who's been excellent all season. But if Deshaies can pitch out of the bullpen effectively, then that neutralizes that Met advantage, and they've got the two quality right-handers in Kerfeld and Smith. What a series. And can anybody tell us what Daryl Strawberry will do? I mean, because you can talk about all the keys you want, but the kid is so awesome. And if his bat gets in gear, no matter who's thrown, he could be something. Palmer blows a fastball past Walker for his sixth strikeout. The guy who knows about K's looks on. To break free. <laughs> Accept the challenge. To master a more demanding world. Feel the pride. Show the world your U.S. Navy. Live the adventure. Call 1-800-327-NAVY. Dawn at the track, where speed and heat work relentlessly to break down motor oil. This is where we put Quaker State motor oil to the ultimate test. This is our laboratory, where we make sure Quaker State measures up to our standards and yours. Because people who care about their cars don't cut corners on quality. Quaker State, the big Q stands for quality. Really, guys, that was brand new engine. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I never saw an engine start like that. <laughs> I pat my arms off. Come on, that's good exercise. Hey, do you remember the cake those guys had? Uh huh, yeah. That was good draft beer. Yeah. That beer was terrific. When you drink a new Miller Genuine Draft, it'll remind you of the best beer you ever had. Because it is Genuine Draft. Cold filtered for real draft smoothness. Miller Genuine Draft. It's beer at its best. Some new engine. Uh, can we change the subject, guys? Uh -huh. <laughs> My dandruff shampoo is good. Maybe you should try something else. My dandruff shampoo really works. Maybe you should try something else. 
like Celsin Blue. Doctors and pharmacists recommend Celsin Blue more than all other leading brands combined. What that means to you is no leading brand gets rid of dandruff better than Celsin Blue. It's number one. And like all Celsin Blue formulas, new extra medicated Celsin Blue is for serious dandruff with the ingredients recommended most by doctors. No perfect game for Clancy today. Evans homers in the fifth at Fenway, 1-0 Red Sox. Dickey Thon, he's come back to contribute since the beaning a couple of years ago against Mike Therese of the Mets, but how great would this already excellent Astro team be if Thon had been able to fulfill his potential? He was on his way to becoming the best all-round shortstop when you consider everything, offense and defense, in the National League. For that one year in 83, he sure was. The numbers showed it. 20 home runs, 79 runs batted in, stole 34. And he was disabled earlier. He put himself on the disabled list because the left eye was starting to give him trouble. wasn't seeing the ball. And he came off the disabled list, saw a different ophthalmologist who renewed his confidence, saying, hey, it's starting to get a little bit better. And with the near playing him against left-handed pitchers, what was giving Thon trouble with balls hitting the hole to his right. Left eye grabbed for the ball and it wasn't there. There's never been a fear factor as far as stepping in the batter's box, but he's starting to come back. One and one to Virgil, leading off last half of the fifth. Breaking ball, swung on and missed. I gave Darwin a break at the end of the fourth inning on his strikeout total. I was looking at Palmer's total mistakenly, and I told you Danny had five. In fact, Darwin has struck out three to this point. Darwin did some good pitching in the American League, although his record didn't always show it. Now the Brewers' biggest... offense was was really not very good. Good part of this year when he was there. In '85, he pitched 11 complete games. Had a respectable ERA of 3.8, and remember, ERAs are generally higher in the American League, and yet he was just 8 and 18 for the Brewers. 6 and 8 for them this year before he was dealt to Houston. He began his career with the Rangers, first pitched in the big leagues in 78. In 1980, he was 13 and 4, primarily out of the bullpen. There's his fourth strikeout. He's throwing very hard. I think that's something that Les Moss. The Houston Astros pitching coach did with him. He threw most of his pitches a little bit more sidearm and was very effective against right-hander with the with the seams fastball that sunk. And Les Moss said, now wait a second, you can get left-handers out and you can pitch upstairs. Go with the four-seamer once in a while along with the forkball. And he did, he's doing that today. He did it to Murphy to get him a time or two. Pitching upstairs more. He's coming over the top. More of a high three-quarters delivery instead of low three-quarters delivery, which changes the action of the ball. Doesn't stay flat in the strike zone. Did you write all that down? You just got that? No, I memorized it. <laughs> <laughs> one and one. Since coming to the big leagues for keeps in 1980, Darwin has been good, not spectacular. He's never had a single season where his ERA was any higher than 3.94 several seasons considerably lower than that and yet his career record is 11 games under 500 off Darwin picked up by Walling no play Thomas who runs very well will be credited with a single Andres Thomas out of the Dominican Republic had a stretch where he made a lot of errors in about a week's period of time but most of it was because he wasn't playing steadily a little slider hit one hop right back to Darwin don't know if he didn't see it or he didn't really make a good attempt at it fooled him I think the Thomas will be their everyday shortstop next year he can run he throws Al Manchak who's traveled with Chuck Tanner teaches middle infield play as well as anybody and he's been working with Thomas every day on his footwork Walling creeping in at third Palmer, a 190 hitter with a homer and six RBIs in a sacrifice situation. Astros lead 2 0. Braves batting bottom half of the fifth. He squares and bunts it back to the screen. The Astros bullpen going to the league championship series of the Mets will look like this left hander Jeff Calhoun, on the right side Larry Anderson, Aurelio Lopez, Charles Kerfeld. 
And of course, Dave Smith. Possibility the Shays could be in the bullpen from the left side also. But Lopez down there, and they haven't had an effective uh, left-hander out of the bullpen. He's almost like a left-hander with that screwball he's got. That screwball will neutralize some of those left-handed hitters. Palmer gets it down. Dreesen fields it. And over to Pankovic covering on the successful sacrifice. Again, we remind our viewers, at the end of the game, we select the NBC Miller Lite player of the game, as we do each Saturday. As far as Davey Johnson's Mets are concerned, they will open with Gooden. They will follow with the left-hand Rojita. Darling in game three at Shea, and then very likely Sid Fernandez in game four. And one feature of the Met starting rotation, not only are they all good, but they're all different. It's quite a contrast to go from the flamethrower Gooden to an off-speed pitcher like Ojeda, who might be likened to a John Tudor, his former Red Sox teammate. Then you go back to the fastball hard slider guy in Darling, and then the deceptive motion of Fernandez to follow him. That's if Fernandez starts game four. Sound a little bit like Davey Johnson took a page out of the book of his mentor, Earl Weaver, who had the McGregors and the Flanagans, along with two right-handers, Palmer, and way back when they had Cuellar and McNally, and then two right-handers, Dobson and Palmer. So you mix them up. Right, left, right, left. Hall gives one a ride to right center. They were playing him shallow, but getting back there is cool to make the catch at the edge of the track. So that takes care of Albert Hall and the Braves in the last half of the fifth. It remains 2-0 Astros. Characters of the game brought to you by A&W Root Beer. Sit back and pour yourself a frosty one. It never was planned. They slipped out. The cameraman laughed. The producer laughed. I laughed. We've created a monster. Sportscaster Chris Berman has become something of a baseball cult figure. How? By coming up with unusual nicknames. Jose, can you see Cruz at the plate? His team down by one. Two out, none on. Berkey home, Blylove, and stares in from the mound. Here's the pitch. That's happened to third base. Jim Houndog Presley with a bare-handed throw to Ken. Good evening, Mr. Phelps at first, but it's not in time. Next man up, Steve Alto Sachs. The pitch from Berkey home, Blylove, and belted to center field. Oda B. Young again, McDowell going back, 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 back. He can't get it. It's off the wall. It bounds away from him. Kevin Smallmouth Bass up with the ball, throws it in, but Sachs has a triple. Cruz has scored, and the game is tied. Manager Pat O.K. Corrales goes to the mound, wants to make a pitching change. Here's his reliever, Jay Thurston B. Howell, to pitch to Vaughn Purple Hayes. Here's the pitch. Hit up the middle. Fettuccini Alfredo Griffin dives for the ball. He can't get it. Face it. The ball game is over. I'm not an actor. That's the way I am. Scary, isn't it? <laughs> I'm looking for a tall, cold, frosty one, big foamy head, rich and creamy. No. Three A and W's. Root beer. The A and W root beer. It's got that frosty mug taste. Call yourself a frosty one. A and W. No. Huh? No. What do you guys do for a living, huh? the Red Sox can clinch a tie if they beat the Blue Jays today. The magic number is three. Then they can finish it off if they can win again tomorrow at Fenway. And if they should go on, looks like they're going to clinch it. Tom Siebert, who's got some knee problems, going to miss a couple of starts. He is questionable for league championship series, and he gave them some good outings. So it would be Clements, Hurst, Boyd, and Siebert. Or will it be Seaver? Will he be able to pitch? It may really change radically the plans of John McNamara. He may have to go with Nipper or go with a three-man rotation, which I don't think he wants to do with Clements. He is, he's avoided because of Clements' past arm problems, going with him on three, four days rest. You saw the race within a race for the batting title. Mm -hmm. Two of the best in recent history. Mattingly is 0 for 2 today with a walk against Jack Morris of the Tigers at Yankee Stadium. Morris is going for his 20th win, by the way. He comes in at 19-8. Boggs, who had four hits in the extra inning game at Fenway last night, is 0 for 2 so far today against Clancy of the Blue Jays. In past years, you had the McRae, Brett, close race to the last day. Brett won. You had George Cal and right at him. George Warners Cal and Ted Williams. Cal beat out Williams on the last day one year. Reynolds is retired, although he hit a bullet. Watch Horner go up for it. 
The defense for the Braves has not been a good one. They can hurt defensively inner and outer defense. And run production's down. I mean, it's just they've got a lot of rebuilding to do on this team. Or if they stick with the team they've got, hope they can all have good years at the same time next year. Walling's 0 for 2. Palmer's pitch inside. The other intriguing thing about the Boggs Mattingly race with Wade in front now by three points, 352 to 349. A drive to center. Murphy started in, now goes back, and he can't get it over his head and up against the fence for a double for Walling. A one out double for Denny Walling. That sun is a little tough. You can see Murph looking up right now that it did bother him when he turned and when he tried to pick the ball up again, he couldn't find it. He looked back to find the warning track and he's waiting for it to come out of the sun and he grabs for it and it's over his head. Ironically, it was Bobby Cox, who was the manager here at Atlanta, who took Murphy out from behind the plate. And Murph was a catcher and said, oh, no way. With his bat, his running speed, I'm not going to take a chance of him getting hurt behind the plate. And Murph's been a good center fielder. And perhaps Cox now and Tanner have talked to him and said, look, maybe we should get him at his age now, as hard as he plays, out of center field, out, right off the foot. It hurt, but he's okay. Started to say that that Mattingly matchup with Boggs becomes more intriguing because the Yankees finish the season with a series next weekend at Boston. So they'll duel head to head. The Red Sox will likely have clinched the division by that time, but there'll still be plenty of interest in those games as Boggs and Mattingly battle it out right off the right instep, and down goes Jose. By the way, next Saturday's Red Sox Yankee game from Fenway will be seen here on NBC. Dave LeBassier comes out. Check it out. You don't need any injuries, do you, Hal? That's why you don't want to play. You want to get rid of the little injuries when you clinch this early. It's always that blessing to have about 10 games remaining, clinching. Get the little injuries out of the way. Hope you don't get any others and you don't play guys for that reason. You don't want to take a chance. Some guys play so hard to cruise as one, tearing something up. You just want to keep them sharp. Always the controversy. Is it better to clinch early or have the momentum going in? I think it's better to clinch early. Wade Boggs just hit into a double play up at Fenway, so he's now officially 0 for 3. And the slender gap narrows even further. Well, that'll be determined when the Yankees go up to finish in Fenway Park for the last, what, three games of the season? My man. You do not listen to the Did remarks. You say that? Uh, yes. Oh, well, that's good. In great detail, and evidently you were so enthralled by it that you went out for a soda. <laughs> I was worried about Chael's foot. Well, if compassion was the reason, then I'll uh, I'll let it slide. Two and one. Walling is at second. The Astros lead two nothing in the top half of the sixth. They're trying to win their 90th of the year. The team they'll face in the playoffs, the Mets, has won a team record 101 to this point. Bouncing ball foul. The Mets won an even 100 in the regular season in 1969, along the way to their only world championship. Well, with what you mentioned, and I reiterated, excuse me, please, do you think that <laughs> because Mattingly then might have a little bit of an advantage because John McNamara, when they clinch, will only get his starting pitchers out there enough innings and pitches to keep them sharp. So Mattingly has a chance to bat against some second line pitching. Whereas Lou Pinella, if his job is at stake, will be going with his best pitchers. But that still might be an advantage for Bob. I was with just what going to say that the Yankee pitching best staff is so ragged. Yeah. That Boggs might feast on them anyway. 2-2 pitch. Off-speed breaking pitch drilled fair between Horner and the bag. Walling will score. Cruz has extra bases as it bounces around in the bullpen. He stops at second, and it's 3-0 Houston. And if Boggs or Mattingly won it, I can't see Mattingly do it. He, they could sit out if they wanted to. Remember Ted Williams going for 400, had a chance to sit out the final day. He played a doubleheader and went six for eight. I don't think it's in the mentality I don't of either it. Wade Boggs or Don Mattingly to do that. There's Yogi. He's got 21 World Series rings. If he gets one this year, he will have 22, which would tie, if there is such a record, Frank Crescetti, the former great Yankee coach who has 22 World Series rings. Pro had so many, didn't take rings. He took shotguns. They're going to walk him. Yeah. 
Craig McMurtry, he's been on the disabled list, up and throwing for Chuck Tanner. We are not being attacked here. What you're hearing, it's Fan Appreciation Day here in Atlanta, and they gave them seat cushions as presents. And now the natives are growing restless, and they are banging the seat cushions together to create the desired effect, desired by some, I guess. Let's listen to this fan symphony. I do think, though, I have found something I like better than the waves. As long as they don't start flipping them out in the field. That's next. Remember in California in Anaheim Stadium, the big A, when they used to serve tortillas? Wait a minute. Violence has broken out. <laughs> Call they the medics. To, they used to serve tortillas till they started flinging them out in the field two years ago, and the city ordinance came about. They passed the law. There will be no more tortilla throwing in Anaheim. The legislator did its job. Hey, when a guy goes on the DL after slipping on a tortilla, <laughs> it's tragic. <laughs> Strike one to Pankovitz. Sounds like a seal convention. Double-barreled action in the Brave bullpen. Right-hander Craig McMurtry, left-hander Ed Olwine. We talked about some personal tragedies. How about Ed Olwine's father and family hit by a drunken driver in the morning, went off in the river. One of the people have still not been found, washed away dead, apparently. Father injured, just happened a couple of days ago. That was another thing that was mentioned in the Dave Kindred article about these guys not playing on batteries and the, the personal tragedies in life that they try and play through. And Ed Olwine's had that. He went home for a couple of days. Curveball is hit into right center field. Murphy will track it down for the second out. Cruz tags. And he'll advance to third with Dreesen holding first. So now it'll be up to Terry Poole if the Astros want more. He is twice grounded out. That 232 average is in limited duty. And in the pressure of postseason play, he could be a very dangerous man off the bench. Pal Lanier can get him up against the right pitcher in the right spot. Fastball is speared by Palmer. Heck of a play. I don't know if Thomas, cutting over from shortstop, could have gotten there before it went into center field. So Only Palmer if it hit the mound. If it hit the mound, he might have. There's your score. Three nothing Astros. We'll be right back. The traditional vacation in the family car. Except one thing's changed. The family car. Taurus. The new Ford Taurus. One car designed to meet all your driving needs, as well as the needs of those you're driving. Taurus. Now there's an American car that has exactly what we've been looking for. For us. For us. For us. Have you driven a Ford lately? I, I just turned around for half a second and boom, the whole thing went up. <laughs> Oddest day in the summer, and we end up loading that sucker twice. Oh, yeah. Hey, you remember looking at old man Donovan's face? <laughs> After that, I never thought he'd bring out that keg like that. That was good draft. Oh, I remember that beer. When you're drinking new Miller Genuine Draft, it'll remind you of the best beer you ever had. Because it is genuine draft. Cold filtered for real draft smoothness. Miller Genuine Draft. It's beer at its best. How come Donovan ever asked us back? <laughs> Good. Time to go, boys. You've been in there long enough. Hey, we're not even tired. I feel good. So I've checked the mileage, Andy. Hey, where are the auto lights? We're guaranteed. Guaranteed. I feel good. Yeah, two years, no matter how far we go. But no spark plug guarantees that. We do. So good. Yeah, we're the auto lights. I... So go pull the plug on somebody else. Okay. Feel good. Oh, the dilemma of choosing the right pregame show. She demands predictions. He, the latest scoop. We at NBC Sports suggest you put as much thought into selecting a pregame show as you did when choosing your friends. Possibly more. NFL 86, the one you'll choose. You think the New York media is not waiting for him when the Astros come to Shea? One of the most beloved figures in the history of sports. As you mentioned, Tony, if they can get past New York, 
He'll appear in his 22nd World Series, 14 as a player, 5 as a coach, 2 as a manager, once each Mets and Yankees thus far. Should alert Joe Gargiola to Yogi's already got his plans. If Houston does get in the World Series, Yogi is already making plans to have dinner almost every day, breakfast, if Joe picks up the tap. That's if Houston gets in, so be alert, Joe. Yogi's looking for you. He wants you to pick up the tabs. Maybe they can stick Scully with it. <laughs> Both of them will come out ahead. Doing a little hitting instructing, even though Menke's hitting instructor with Billy Doran. Everybody knew right in spring training. When Yogi hit Kissimmee, the spring training cap, when Dr. McMullen talked him to be a bench aide to Helen Ear, it was almost a cinch. Yogi is such a lucky person. Two things you do. They're going to be in postseason play, and the plane wouldn't go down with Yogi there. 3-1 pitch to Obert Bell. Full count to him, leading off in the last half of the sixth. He'll be followed by Murphy and Horner. takes it a stride short of the track. You know, people that you never hear mentioned regarding the Astros with clinching the West just the other day are two very important individuals no longer with the organization. Al Rosen, now with the San Francisco Giants, had a lot to do with player acquisitions, trades, helping develop the farm system. And Bobby Lillis, the former manager, some of the things that he implemented didn't work until they added a few other players and strengthened the pitching staff, and Helen Ear inherited that. A little bit of that happened with the old Cincinnati Reds when Dave Bristol had a lot of young players and had patience with them. Then Sparky came along and won with those clubs and had a mini dynasty. You forget the people who help, you know, spade and do the groundwork. Well, you could even say it might be stretching a point a bit, but Trammell and Whitaker and several other key Tigers broke in under Ralph Houck. Parrish Morris. And then eventually that team became a champion. And none of that takes anything away from Sparky, who was a fine manager for both the Reds and the champion Tigers, and his record indicates that. 1-2 pitch. Fastball swung on and missed, and Darwin is still throwing major league heat. I don't think it's very comfortable hitting up there right now with the hitters standing in the shadows and the pitcher out in the bright sun. Like a camera lens that you can open and close the shutters. The eyeballs can, but it's too late. When it goes from the bright sun, when you've got the focus, and then it becomes a blur and almost a black like the eight ball coming at you. That is strikeout number five for Darwin. Horner's two for two. Breaking ball hit in the air to left center field. A couple of infielders back. And the catch is made by Pankovitz, the second baseman. They had shifted over to that side, and Pankovitz was near the second base bag, and he goes into left center to take it. Back after this from your local station. Tonight, it's a our magazine exclusive behind-the-scenes interviews with the cast of Falcon Crest, including superstar Kim Novak. Monday at 4 on Channel 5. Gotta get a muffler. Sometimes you need a muffler, but you don't have a lot of time. Oh, money. Gotta get a muffler. And sometimes you just don't have a lot of faith. Take it to my You'll never be thrilled about replacing a muffler. But without fast service and good prices, you won't be sorry either. Take it to Midas. He's got to get a muffler. Take it to someone you trust. Tires in the mire. Gears in shambles. Now, now. The New Isaac Pro Series presents the Budweiser National Motor Spectacular. Coming October 3rd through the 5th in the Garden. The Hot Rod Mud Racing Fall National. Oh, yeah. See Super Modified Unlimited and Formula Mud Racers. See Dixie Mud Dauber versus the Terminator. Plus those wild three-wheel ATV and four-wheel quad championship races. And the Budweiser Hot Rod Truck Tug of War. And Monster Mania, world-famous monster car crusher wheel standing king crunk. Mud Madness. It may take us a week to clean up. Miller 
contains no additives or preservatives. Purity you can see, quality you can taste. Dave Robinson, tonight on News 5. When the subject is perseverance, the name Cliff Speck has to come up. There he is, number 39. He was the Mets' first-round draft choice back in 1974. Not every first-rounder turns into a superstar, but others taken in the first round that year included Dale Murphy, Rick Sutcliffe, Willie Wilson, Gary Templeton, Lance Parrish, Lonnie Smith. Stardom did not figure in Cliff Speck's future. He became a journeyman. And he went through five different organizations, was released four times, played on 11 different minor league teams, and finally, 12 years after being taken in the first round by the Mets, he made his first major league appearance when he was called up in late July by the Braves, and he won his first big league start against San Diego. We were here about a month ago, and he came up and he said, do you remember me? And I said, well, I know the name, of course. He said, well, you saw me pitch in 1974 in the Midwest League when I was a property of the New York Mets. And I said, honestly, I didn't think you were still in baseball, not having made the major league. But that's the perseverance that kid has shown. He's not a kid. He is a kid in major league service. He's 30 years old now and finally wearing a big league uniform. For those of you who might be just joining us and heard all the racket in the background, we'll tell you that those are seat cushions being banged together by some of the restive fans. Robbie Wine pokes one into right center field. Murphy chasing it, Hall chasing it. It splits the gap. Dad up in the press box is smiling. In he goes with a double. You know, before the game, Bobby Wine, who works for the Atlanta organization, said, I don't know how to root. I said, well, maybe Robbie can get four hits and the Braves can win the game. Well, he's got a couple, and the Astros have the 3-0 lead, so it isn't working out exactly right. There's Roy Matika to his left in the white shirt. Matika managed the Richmond team to such a fine season, the AAA farm of the Braves this year. And Bobby is telling Roy, saying, see, now that's the way I taught him to hit. You get the ball down in the way, you don't try and pull it, go the opposite way, and if Wine does that, he's got a chance to be a good hitter. Robbie Wine, two for three. Darwin steps up. He couldn't sacrifice the first time he tried it. He struck out twice. And he bunts foul once more. Wine is at second with nobody out. I don't know if Wine will be ready to play in the major leagues next year. He could be by the middle of next year, but they had a young catcher named Mark Bailey who they brought up, and Al Rosen did it. He saw him play in the minor leagues. He hurt his shoulder. Part of his season is gone. The Miserac and Ashby getting a little age on him. Robbie Wine could be there next year. He needs at bats is what he needs. A one pitch as he'll try it again and bunt it foul again. They had such high hopes for Mark Bailey, switch hitting catcher with power, but he has not become anything close to a good receiver yet, and it's probably best that Alan Ashby, a veteran with playoff experience, a guy who knows how to handle pitchers, Ashby will be the guy behind the plate in the playoffs and possibly World Series. And Ashby is also a switch hitter. So Lanier doesn't have to platoon there. From year to year, sometimes you don't know. In Toronto one year, he started switch hitting. Then one year, he hit only left-handed. Then he went back to switch hitting again. You... He's back to switch hitting, right? Darwin is back to looking. No matter what side of the plate, he couldn't bunt. Didn't bother to swing. Takes a called third strike. And that's number seven for Palmer. Three of those, this man right here, Darwin. He says, I didn't have to bother with that in Texas and Milwaukee, and I'd just as soon not bother with it here. Up steps Walker, who's 0 for 3. <laughs> just see Baylor now with an RBI. Evans had a home run earlier after Clancy had a perfect game for about four innings. So now Evans with a home run, Baylor an RBI, 2 nothing. Magic number 3 for Boston. Bouncing ball to short. Runner moves up. Thomas throws and gets him. So Robbie Wine down at third. You were a contemporary of his dad's. 
He playing shortstop for the Phillies and you for the Yankees. And I think that it's fair to say that Bobby Wine during that period, early mid 60s, was regarded as one of the three or four best defensive shortstops in the game. No question, one of the best strong, uh, strongest throwing arms among shortstops in the game. Had great range and mobility. Obviously a student of the game. That's why he serves as an advanced scout, a consultant to Bobby Cox. Look now, it looks like they're going over some signs. Something that the young shortstop Thomas will have to learn. And a ball hit right there with a catcher on second base. And Wine is average runner at best. But if Thomas charges the ball, he gets him at third base. But he laid back on the ball and just took the out at first base, allowing that runner to go to third. Some of the things he's going to have to iron out if he's going to be the shortstop here next year. Through the middle, another RBI for Reynolds. It'll be his third of the game. And Wine comes across. Bobby Wine played shortstop and his DP partner was Cookie Rojas and some of the Philly wags referred to it as the days of Wine and Rojas. Mm. Someone else said that, not me. Here's Palmer reacting as the ball whizzes past him and yeah, he falls further behind. It shows you the one inning before where he caught a line drive right off the glove on the left side. His follow through perfectly took him into that line drive. Here's one not hit as well, but because he turns it back, he gets by him. Cookie Rojas now an advanced scout for Gene Mock. He's probably scouting Boston. Gets to the playoffs when they start. He probably will get on the National League playoffs. Tony Pacheco and Roy Hartsfield, the former Blue Jays manager, have been scouting the Mets. And once the that old line up again. Once the American League Championship Series start, if it's Boston, looks like it against California. George Brophy, formerly from the Twins, Eddie Robinson, and Pacheco will go over and scout the American League for Hallinier. Walling had a double over Murphy's head in center his last time up. The Astros lead 4-0 as they bat here in the seventh. Two in the third, one in the sixth, and one in this inning. Check swing. Another Off Palmer's one. backside. He can't find it. Now he does. And got him at first. Wow, and Walling, I don't know if he pulled a hamstring, but Walling is limping down behind first base, and that's a big bat. He's really limping around. I don't know if it's the hamstring, Achilles tendon, but he is really limping. He just throws the glove at it, hits him in the back, I believe. Try to Bill Lee style play. And when Wally tried to get the extra burst of speed, I don't know if he jammed his heel on the bag or something worse. And now here's another edition of Baseball Remembers. Old Spice presents Baseball Remembers. Brought to you by Old Spice Solid Antiperspirant. It keeps you so much drier, you just might want to switch from your old antiperspirant mid-stick. Mel Allen remembers the emotion of Lou Gehrig Day. They retired the number of Lou Gehrig, a very famous day, July 4th, 1939. It became the first old-timers game, because a lot of his old teammates uh, had come. And they were really saying goodbye to Lou. And Lou knew he was saying goodbye. Jay, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. I want to dry eye in the house. I can almost hear the ovation right now. Seems like it never ends. Once guys try the 24-hour protection of Old Spice Solid, they may give up their usual antiperspirant mid-stick. Your dad, mm. only used twice. Very short strokes. Fact is, none of these solid antiperspirants help stop wetness as well as Old Spice Solid. These deodorant sprays can't block odor better than Old Spice Stick. So switch now. Sarge, for you. Hardly used. Kind of like your comb. <laughs> switch to 24-hour Old Spice. Antiperspirant or deodorant. This is an NBC News special report. Here is Connie Chung in New York. 
Good afternoon. The Senate just moments ago gave its final approval to an historic tax reform bill, the most sweeping change in the tax laws in a generation, and one which is sure to affect most Americans. The bill was passed by the House just two days ago and now remains only to be signed by President Reagan to become law. I'm Connie Chung in New York. We'll have more on this and other stories tonight on NBC Nightly News. Seventh inning stretch concludes in Atlanta, and now the fans can settle back in on top of those seat cushions they were given by Brave Management. And they came in today on Fan Appreciation Day, which helps to account for a pretty good crowd this afternoon with the season winding down. And a base hit by Griffey to open the last of the seventh. Denny Walling did stay in the game after a lot of conferences with Hal and Ear. The trainer came out. Menke, Galanti, so Walling stayed in, but when he went across the diamond, Reynolds came over to him and he pointed to his left hip. That's what he limped from after he hit first base, trying to beat that ball out. Here's the end of the play, off the back of Palmer, he throws him out. A moment ago, an incorrect score popped on the screen very briefly. It said 7-0. It's 4-0, Astros. Ramirez sends one into deep left center field, but Walker will run it down. And Griffey retreats to first. He better hurry. It's interesting. We were talking about Al Rosen. Before he left, he did something that a lot of people felt didn't make sense. Of course, they've always tried to sign speed because of the monstrous dome, one of the best home park advantages of all of baseball, if not the most. Rosen had this theory that most teams that win a lot play in smaller ballparks. Don't know if it's accurate or not. So he moved those fences in 10 feet, and all of a sudden the offense is better. And even at that, the pitching staff has stayed so good second in the league in ERA. So another thing that Rosen did aside from player acquisition. You think it worked? They won. Can't argue with that. Didn't bother the pitching staff. Of course, Mike Scott came along. Virgil has fanned twice against Darwin, and he's behind here 0-2. And, and we've mentioned Scott so many times. It isn't just the great split finger fastball, and he and Jack Morris probably have the two best today. But Scott is throwing 95 mile an hour heat. He's throwing a rising fastball that is such an incredible contrast, Virgil gets a piece of it, to that wickedly dipping split finger. How in the world can you react? Are you asking me? I don't have any idea. You know, he does have a slider, but he'll go through some games where it's just two pitch pitcher. Did you see some of the clips from the no-hitter against the Giants? One pitch, a guy would swing under the rising fastball by a foot. The very next pitch, he'd swing over the split finger by a foot. He was making good big league hitters look completely helpless. The irony of it all, again, is the pitcher who made it famous, Bruce Souter, sitting across in the other dugout, Atlanta dugout, taught to him by the late Freddie Martin. It's not a new pitch. It used to be called a fork ball. This didn't jam back. But Bruce Souter, whose career may be in jeopardy, sitting across the way. He works out every day, hasn't thrown a ball for a long time. He's just resting it and trying to re-strengthen the shoulder. Suter coming on in relief in the peak of his career for an inning or two used to throw the split finger almost exclusively. Scott, of course, is a starter and a guy who pitches a lot of complete games, mixing it in with the fastball. This one is popped up and out of play, mixing it in with the fastball and slider, and I would think it's even more effective if that's possible in combination with the other good pitches. Suter's was never as hard as the one thrown by either Danny Darn, who's thrown a few today, or a Scott, some Jack Morris. And that's why people say of the Scots and the Morris, hey, those aren't fork balls or split things. You can't throw a fork ball that hard. In the high 80s, they're saying they're doctored pitches. Sandpaper. Whatever. That's what they say. Sandpaper, soap on the pants, little jelly somewhere, or hair tonic in the hair. There goes the Runner going. Virgil, a strikeout victim for the third time. And Griffey steals second base. Yeah. 
So Palmer will make it Darwin has struck out six and Virgil half the time. One problem they think that Darwin will have more of in the National League. Right, they'd like him in middle relief to get some right handed hitters out or long relief. High leg kick, sometimes sidearm delivery, you can get a good jump. You know what might be a real cruel thing? Roger Clemens, who throws the heater you just talked about, just a little short of Nolan Ryan in his prime, has a curved slider, a straight change. He also has a fork ball that Billy Fisher, the pitching coach, won't let him throw, so you don't need it yet. Do you imagine what happens if you have that, baby? Cruel and unusual punishment. Uh-huh. one to Thomas. Quickly 0 and 2 and even with Ryan as great as the fastball was approaching 100 miles an hour and still is as he comes up on age 40 and remains a power pitcher. The key always has been can he get the great curveball over because if he doesn't even with that fastball big league hitters will hit that fastball if they can sit on it. But if he gets the curve over in combination with it same as Clemens same as Gooden seventh strikeout for Darwin as Thomas goes down swinging. We'll be back. It started out as a party. but turned into a case of the missing case. The really in there. Put you out the lights! It's okay, doll. No, it's not. There's a case of Miller Lite missing. Oh, it's okay. Somebody in this room. Right! Hey, guys, take it easy. Why'd you do it, Rodney? Cause light tastes great? Yeah! Well, cause light's less filthy. Yeah! I didn't do it. Well, I'm not even Rodney. You! I thought it was a costume party! Great mask, huh? But if he didn't do it, who did? They'll never figure out who took that case. Oh, you did! Not exactly. Hiya, dog! <laughs> Gotcha. Oh, I'm glad we didn't go dancing. It's no mystery that there's only one light beer, Miller Lite. The art of investment and financial security requires painstaking preparation. Bold strokes influenced by a mastery of expertise. A creative approach to IRAs, annuities, and innovative forms of insurance. As one of the strongest diversified financial institutions, we have the capabilities to turn the business of investment into an art. The Travelers. Have you looked under the Traveler's umbrella lately? Sonic, the future of office automation. Advanced equipment with an extraordinary concept. The easier, the better. Panasonic offers solutions to your special computer problems. High-speed microprocessors, high-resolution monitors, and high-performance printers, which make them a very easy choice. Panasonic computers and computer peripherals, like our typewriters and copiers. The easier, the better. Panasonic office automation. Wine obtained in a deal with the Mets organization just prior to the start of this season. They sent minor league pitcher Mike Santiago to New York in exchange for him. He was at Richmond until June 1st. They called him up when Bruce Souter was placed on the disabled list. Ed Olwine, the new pitcher. Baseball doesn't lend itself to matchup comparisons the way basketball or football do, and yet it's interesting. Take a look. Carter and Hernandez have excellent personal histories against Mike Scott. But remember, as we said before, Scott has pitched only once against the Mets this year, and he's a whole different pitcher since perfecting the split finger. Strawberry, on the other hand, hasn't hit Scott, doesn't touch Nepper. Nepper, what, three and one during the year against the Mets? Right. Including a shutout. He beat Ron Darling three nothing earlier this year. It's going to depend upon the pitching, isn't it? Could be pitching series in both the American and National League Championship Series, even with Fenway Park in the American League. Anaheim, the ball doesn't carry quite as well. That's what they look like, the projected starting lineups. Mookie Wilson has been playing some left field of late. Could be used defensively there. A lot of votes now, if you have votes counted, swinging more toward Houston as far as who will win. I still think the Mets are going to win it. A tough six, maybe even a tough seven games. 
Oh, and two to Cruz, who's two for three. He had an RBI double his last time up. Called third strike. Allwine drops down, and that's awfully tough on a left-handed hitter. Cheo doesn't like the call of Ed Montague, but the guy drops down from the side, and you start bailing out. You can't see the outside corner too well. A very prized commodity. A left-hander who can throw a breaking ball over or near the plate. You can come in in middle innings, turn a lineup around, make the manager make some decisions, and you've got another left-hander, maybe it's Zane Smith for Atlanta, coming out of the bullpen. Allwine relieves Palmer, who had good stuff today. He struck out seven. And the only walk he issued was an intentional walk. And we told you at the beginning of the game that he had had occasional control problems this year. Palmer gave up four runs and seven hits, but two of the four runs were unearned. Dreesen pulls it down a Horner, unassisted put out, two gone. Do you have a little fly-by-night pick in that thing? you like the Mets? Do you like Houston? Do you want to stay uncommitted? Is it, are there too many complexities that you would not even vouchsafe a guess? I mean, we're not going to hold you to anything. It's just kind of fun. Boston, too, behind Bruce Hurst, Clancy for Toronto. Home run by Evans, RBI by Baylor. Morris locked in a duel with Drabeck. Morris looking for his 20th at Yankee Stadium today. Virgil, fair ball. fair ball, throw to first. What a shame that the inning has ended, thereby <laughs> prohibiting me from making my selection. We go to the last half of the eighth. The right parts. Mr. Goodwrench has the right parts for your GM car. Parts that fit. Parts engineered for your car by people who designed your car. Parts for every make and every model of virtually every GM car and light truck on the road today. Mr. Goodrens can help you keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts because no one knows your GM car better. No one. This is where it begins. Anywhere there's moisture, there's the chance of catching athlete's foot. This is where it ends. Mycotin. Only Mycotin cures athlete's foot with Myconazole, a medically proven ingredient that eliminates athlete's foot. This is where athlete's foot begins. This is where it ends. Mycotin. The end of athlete's foot. Maybe you heard just a little crack is okay. Maybe you heard cocaine can't really hurt you. Well, you heard wrong. There's no home run on cocaine. You get me? Are you listening? Just a little bit of crack or cocaine can be addictive or even kill you. That's the real truth. The lie is, it's the other guy who's going to die. Cocaine, the big lie. Call 1-800-662-HELP. Furnished by Major League Baseball in cooperation with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. 33-year-old Larry Anderson, released in mid-May by the Phillies, for whom he had pitched since 1983, and almost immediately signed by the Astros, and he's given Hal Lanier some pretty good service, and in addition, helped to keep his teammates loose. He has shown up in his cone man, cone head get-up frequently. You remember in Philadelphia, he used to occasionally make an appearance wearing those Rastafarian dreadlocks. Mm. And when he and Bill Cottle were at the same team up in Seattle, that was really a pair. Larry Andelson's been very, very good. One statistic you don't see a whole lot in newspapers is runners inherited and how many were scored upon. Give you an idea about Anderson. When he's coming to ball game, he has inherited from the pitcher who just left 32 runners and only nine have scored. So he helps a lot of starters' ERAs. And that's a pretty big stat if you're starting pitcher. This telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. Ed Allwine pitched one inning, and now he is hit for as Omar Moreno will lead it off here. And they come very tight at the corner. Walling and Dreesen. Omar still runs well.
Albert Hall on deck. Fastball strike. Now, I am not going to let you off the hook. You closed out the last inning after Owen strikeout. Do you have even a guess as to who might win? Gene Garber has had a good year out of the bullpen. Jerry Morales down there, the bullpen coach. There's no doubt the Mets have been the best team in baseball over the course of the season. That misses one and two. But the way Houston is playing now and with the pitchers they have and the extra home game, and it definitely makes a difference whether they play on turf or not. Marino with a weak swing, and he becomes a strikeout victim leading off in the last half of the eighth. You have to think that the series is a near toss-up. I think it'll go seven. And may the best team win. <laughs> what a guy. Right out of the limb again. Albert Hall is one for three. Had a bunt single back in the third. As great as the Met pitching staff has been all year. You just talk about a front three and the way they're throwing now, they don't have any advantage on Houston. And Sid Fernandez, their fourth starter, has not pitched well the last couple of months, which might mean that both these clubs will go with only three starters. And we would see Gooden versus Scott three times if it went seven. I think the defense of the Astros is better all round. I think, though, when you get a strikeout staff, and they both are strikeout staffs, perhaps over the long haul, the Mets having more power pitchers, although you wouldn't know it from those little three consecutive games. But because of that, when you strike out 10 a game, the defense may not play that much of a part. That's 10 balls the defense doesn't have to catch, 10 to 12 if you're striking out that many. And that's why Davey Johnson, if there is an alternative, he will always go more with an offensive player than defense. He can afford to do that because of the strong pitching that they have. The only sinker ball they have on that staff is McDowell. Most of the others are strikeout or fly ball pitchers. Breaking ball called third strike. So Anderson comes in and fans Marino and then Hall. You know, sometimes I think the word pressure is thrown around too loosely in sports, but in this upcoming playoff series, if the pressure is on either team to a greater extent than the other, it's definitely on the Mets. The Mets fans and the media there expect them to win the series. Houston fans hope the Astros win the series. Obergfell grounds it foul. It's one of the cruel truths of sport. And there's no question, excuse me, Bob, go ahead. Well, one of the worst positions you can be in is to be expected to win. The Mets season will be viewed by many as unsuccessful if they don't go all the way and win the World Series. But that's been true of every team. Look at Danny Ozark when the Phillies won three years in a row. Danny was fired. They went on to win it under Dallas Green. Whitey Herzog, who is better than he is as far as handling people and strategy and everything that goes into managing? They win th three in a row in the West. They lose. Then Quisenberry came along and they won, and Whitey didn't have that ace out of the bullpen. And everybody thought the same of them, although the media hype and the media pressures in New York will magnify that and make it even perhaps more so, as you said, because of the Mets' early success, their domination, the fact that so many people dislike them from other teams. They find they're collectively arrogant. And Davey Johnson made the statement coming out of the spring, I want to dominate, and people took that wrong. 2-2 two -two pitch. Struck out the side. Off the scrap heap, huh? Larry Anderson. Mm. He threw a good fastball, passed Oberfeld for the second strike, and then fanned him with the curveball. Nice job by Anderson. Sure, the extra features you get on this limited edition Jetta GLI make it special. But what really makes this car special is this little feature right here. in the U.S. Marine Corps. I marched my men through mud, snow, and rain. And after I turned those cream pots into Marines, I treated myself to the best beer in the U.S. of A. Miller Lite. Lite less filling. 
and this taste makes me proud to be an American. As for you guys out there who spent 10 of the toughest weeks of your lives with me, I got one thing to say. How come you don't write? We're proud to say there's only one light beer, Miller Lite. Got a problem with the old TV? Since you usually can't trade it in, maybe you've hung on to it a little longer than you'd like. Well, right now at Curtis Mathis, your old TV is worth up to $300 in trade on selected new TVs, stereos, and VCRs, all with our extensive customer service and exclusive four-year warranty. So, if your old TV isn't what it used to be, bring it to Curtis Mathis today, because National Trade-In Days are on now. Sunday, the NFL plays here when the Seahawks battle the Redskins. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL 86. Gene Bar Garber makes his first appearance in 11 days. He hasn't pitched since the 16th of September because of tendonitis in his right elbow. He has 23 saves, so through it all, picking up for Bruce Souter with the arm problem. The team falling apart in July. Garber has sustained a pretty good year. Terry Poole is the first man he'll face. Terry is 0 for 3, although the last time up he scorched one, which Palmer caught. Ball one. Houston bullpen going again. Dave Smith, who hasn't pitched for eight days, it's been a blessing because of his elbow, and that was big Charlie Kerfell. Kerfell on the right. Can't miss him. Little Fridge, huh? Hmm. He weighed about 30, 40 pounds more than that when he was called up last year, so they have... He's a svelte-looking setup man now. Oberkfell on the high hop. That takes care of Fool, who wears an 0-for-4 collar. Well, before he lost all that weight, his teammates were calling him John Candy, and he did bear a strong resemblance to the comedian. He's a comedian in his own right. They played an exhibition game earlier this season at West Point. And he tried to start a food fight with the cadets in the dining hall. Some of the brass were not <laughs> enamored of his act. His draft papers will show up one game before the league championship <laughs> start and series begins. He's been shipped off to the Middle East. But to balance that out, the Houston police will make a pinch on several of the Met players. Ojeda, Tuffle, Darling, and who's the other one? They face trial after the season is over in Houston after that altercation this summer with the police there. And that'll be the subject of headlines, one of the subplots of the series. Garber with great off-speed stuff. Let's see if Robbie Wine can handle it. What a nice day. A couple base hits, two runs scored. Caught a nice game for Danny Darwin. Darwin apparently liked all the pitches that Robbie Wine put down or suggested and didn't, didn't shake him off very much. Apparently Kerfeld's coming in. It's maybe just a test for Dave Smith there. See if he can let it loose in this nice warm weather here in Atlanta. And if there's no problem with the elbow, then he'll start getting his regular work. There is his split-fingered fastball signal. He comes in throwing strikes. Whoa, there goes the bat, and there goes Wine as a strikeout victim. He was about a minute and a half ahead of that pitch. Garber showed him the motion, then threw him the changeup, and Wine was helpless. Perhaps one of the only pitchers in the major leagues, you can throw you six, seven, eight consecutive change-ups, and you can still look this bad at it. Alan Ashby now will get an at-bat. Said I did that once. Pops sitting watching. Say that's the way Mark Eichhorn, who is leading the American League ERA, but he will not qualify for the title. He won't have enough innings pitched, but. 
That's the way Icorn makes right-handed hitters look. That fork ball, submarine style, low sidearm. In fact, there's some teams that are talking about making a lot of their fringe pitchers into Icorn's delivery. Saying, hey, look, if the guy can't make it over the top, why not take the last chance, make him like a Garber or Icorn? Ashby's retired as a pinch hitter, and Garber makes quick work of the Astros in the top half of the nine. Part of the order in the bottom half for the Braves. Chocolate is scrunches when it crunches. That's why I love right Crunch. Milk chocolate is so creamy, blending crispies, ooh, so dreamy. Gotta have it when it's crunchy. Blending crispies, ooh, so dreamy. Gotta have it, it's so scrunches. Love that chocolate when it crunches. Crunches. Right chocolate is scrunches when it crunches. <laughs> Brute deodorant, there's a woman who'll be glad he did. Because a man who wears brute deodorant is nice to be close to, and nobody knows that better than a woman. Only brute deodorant gives you long lasting protection with the great smell of brute. Hello. Brute deodorant, cologne, and everything else. Brute, it smells like a man. Great. This guy thinks he makes a better Bob Euchre than I do. Bingo! <laughs> See, you can't imitate the old Euchre just like you can't imitate Miller Lite. All oh, these fans, I love them. Hey, Lite is still the only leading beer with a third less calories than the regular beer and a great taste, too. <laughs> uh, let's go, fella. Oh, I must be in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> Imitations don't make it. <laughs> you can't copy an original. There's only one light beer, Miller Lite. You ever see my John Wayne? <laughs> Sox have clinched a tie, and they can pop the corks on the champagne bottles tomorrow at Fenway if they beat the Blue Jays again. Back in Atlanta, Dale Murphy led off by bouncing a single through the right side here in the last half of the night against Charlie Kerfeld, who has come on in relief. 
Trying to finish it up for Danny Darwin. 2-0 the count to Bob Horner. Big Car Charlie Kerfeld, who'll be 23 tomorrow, from Knob Nuster, Missouri, now lives in Carson City, Nevada. 6-6, listed perhaps charitably at 235. I think he's more than that even after losing 30 pounds. Foul back to the screen. And perhaps of all the pitchers on this Houston Astros staff, Les Moss knows it, I think, I'm sure Alan Ear does, he's the guy that'll have to give a lot of work because he can't have control problems. And if he doesn't work a lot, he could get himself in trouble by walking too many. So he will get those couple of innings here, couple of innings there along the way. You rest him too much, he overthrows. Two and two. He gives you the smoke, and then Smith comes on with the fork ball, and the contrast is part of their combined success. Kerfow with an Astros rookie record with his 11th win. It's San Diego on the 19th. Everything came together. The Shays, Kerfow pitched as well as he has all year. Wild pitch, and Murphy down to second, which is significant only because it takes off the double play. Houston leads 4-0. Houston bats got hot. Walling was smoking the ball. Davis got over the back problems. Smith had the elbow problem, but fortunately the starters were going a long way. Kerfels pitched well over the last 25 games, and when they had to do it, like the Red Sox, they had three teams threatened. Detroit, Baltimore, and the Yankees were all close. They went out in the West Coast swing. They got beat up by the California Angels. Called third strike. They've got to tag him or throw it on down. Horner doesn't realize it, and he didn't make a move, so the out is recorded officially at first. And Horner winds up two for four. We've talked so much about the power pitching staffs National League Championship Series. What about Clements and Hurst? Remember, Bruce Hurst was leading the major leagues in strikeouts before he missed about eight weeks. It wasn't Roger Clemens, and Clemens had already struck out 20. Boyd can give you 10 strikeouts. And now is Chiraldi, who some have said has been awesome, and he's the final piece of the puzzle in that pitching staff for John McNamara. So there's some power pitchers there, too. What about Mike Witt? Pitched a perfect game just two years ago to close out the season. McCaskill can strike guys out. Candelaria. It could be a long fall for hitters, couldn't it? Two and one. Six of the last seven Atlanta hitters have struck out against Darwin, Anderson, and now Kerfeld. There's a Murphy single mixed in. Not only are the hitters having difficulty picking up the ball from sun to shade, I think Robbie Wine is also balls have gotten by him coming out of that bright sun make it seven out of eight as Kerfeld blows a fastball by Griffey Dave Smith who I'm sure after he came down from the bullpen he looked like he cut some fastballs loose we saw him throw the fork ball perhaps when he came down to the bench not perhaps, I'll bet you Helen here said that. Hey, look, how did it feel? They want him to be just right and do not want to use him in a game until all the tenderness and the elbow is gone and then get him back into working order for the Mets. Darwin, Anderson, and Kerfell have combined for 12 strikeouts. Seven by Darwin. Anderson struck out the side in the only inning he worked, the eighth, after Murphy led off with a single. Kerfeld has fanned Horner and Griffey. Behind Ramirez, 2-0. 2-1. Oh. Ah. No save possibility here for Kerfeld, by the way. If the lead had been 3-0, he could notch one. But it's four zip Astros. So he's just trying to finish it for Darwin, who could be four and two for Houston since coming over from Milwaukee if the Astros win this one. Three and two. Ozzie Virgil scheduled next, but Shambliss will hit for him. And he gets a chance as Ramirez draws a walk. 
Virgil had struck out three times against Darwin. And they'll go to Chambliss here with Simmons moving out on deck. So if Chambliss can reach, Simmons would become the tying run at the plate. Kerfeld's reaction as the inning is prolonged. Just out there trying to throw as hard as he can, get some pitches in, and throw strikes. Well, he was upset with himself. Established in 1979 by Mike Love. If they get as far as Simmons, it's worth noting he's hit two pinch hit home runs this year, one of them a grand slam. There's Ted, another one of those who you wonder if he'll be back in uniform with Atlanta. Shambliss, wonder about him, he's having a good year. If he won't announce his retirement, there's speculation on that. Cruz chasing it into foul ground, and it drops in the bullpen. So the count is 0-2, and, and Chambliss has at least one more swing. What Lanier is doing with a few of his regulars, we talked about it earlier, it was a catchable ball, but he's not going to challenge a wall with a pennant already clinched. So he just lets it drop, and he looked like he wasn't running that well. Remember earlier, he fouled the ball off his foot and also had that severe ankle problem come out of spring, so his leg is still not right. 0-2. Got him. He strikes out the side with a single and a walk mixed in. 13 Braves go down on strikes today. Three men combine on a shutout for Houston. Darwin works seven. He gets the win. He's four and two. Anderson strikes out the side in the eighth and does it in order. Kerfeld strikes out the side with a couple of men reaching in the mix in the ninth. What a job. We'll be back with more in Atlanta right after you watch these messages. special to us, so we shopped around for homeowners insurance. Liberty Mutual gave us the right protection at the right price. We, we believe, believe in, in liberty. liberty. They say not when they drive it, but leave it a week and they'll look at it. I've got a headache this big, and it's screaming for Excedrin. Excedrin, the headache medicine. Regular strength pain relievers give you only this much medicine, but Excedrin gives you this much more. Nothing proven stronger without a prescription. I had a headache this big, but I took Excedrin, and it's gone. Excedrin, from Bristol-Myers. Excedrin, the headache medicine. The leader in long-distance service now costs less. AT&T has lowered weekday and evening prices 13.8%, the largest single reduction in our history, but not the first. Since 1984, our prices overall have dropped more than 20%. Of course, you can always look to AT&T for the highest quality service, and now, see where our prices have gone. AT&T, the right choice. The movie Adam made history, but what happened next is even more incredible. I can't lose another son. Adam, his song continues Monday. The Major League Baseball Game of the Week has been brought to you by Miller Lite. For great taste, there's only one light beer by Castrol, the motor, the motor oil or something like that, engineered for today's smaller cars. It'll go into your car more smoothly than I pronounced it. By Howard Johnson Hotels and Lodges and by the full line of 1986 Volkswagens. This week's NBC Miller Lite Player of the Game is Astros pitcher Danny Darwin. Miller Lite is happy to present a check for $1,000 in the name of Danny Darwin to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. Back with some closing comments. See you in a minute. <laughs> what a guy. Ah, nothing beats a cold Miller Lite when you're watching a game under the hot sun, eh, Sparky? Yeah, you great seats, too. <laughs> I bought them last week. Got them on sale. It's almost like being at the park. <laughs> for the best taste under the sun, there's only one light beer, Miller Lite. Why is it murder, though? Oh, oh. 
sometimes getting car financing turns out to be one long hassle. What uh, kind of car did you have in mind? A Fiero. Oh, an Italian car. It's a Pontiac from General Motors. You know, Motors. they make Chevrolets, Oldsmobiles, Buicks, Cadillacs. GMC trucks. This is none of my business, but those are not Italian cars. Make it easy on yourself. Finance your car or truck right at your GM dealer with GMAC. You understand, we do have to know what we want to do with all these cars. Nobody knows more about financing and leasing cars than GMAC. Is this... Howard Johnson? Yes, sir. There's been a lot of changes. You might say we're turning the place upside down. You know, a lot is changing at Howard Johnson. New rooms, new furnishings, and new attention to service. It's different. I like it. One second. I'm just straightening up. No matter how you look at it, this is Howard Johnson. We're turning Howard Johnson upside down. Today's small cars are tougher than ever on oil. Their high compression engines not only rev high, they can run hotter than regular small car engines. Their searing heat can begin to break down in oil immediately. That's why there's Castrol, the only leading motor oil that in every grade provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol before your engine does something to get you heated up. Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. Wood finish by Minwax penetrates deep into wood, so it's easy to get beautiful results. Bring out wood's rich, warm glow with wood finish by Minwax. Minwax makes wood beautiful. The Astros win their 90th of the year, 4-0 today in Atlanta. And they tune up for their playoff confrontation with the Mets. Catcher Alan Ashby joins us down on the field. And during the commercial, Alan, Tony and I were talking about the fact that you caught all three games this week at the Astrodome. DeShay's victory over the Dodgers and then Nolan against the Giants and the no-hitter by Scott to clinch it against San Francisco. I'm guessing you've never seen, let alone caught, three games that well pitched in succession. A uh, number of us on the bench have been talking about it. Uh, never have we seen uh, any kind of pitching like this. Now, we do feel we have a great pitching staff, and we've talked about it a lot. Uh, maybe the Mets have heard us a little too much lately, but uh, the way Deshays came out there. Now, he had about 12 days rest, came out, struck out eight guys in a row. Next night, Nolan Ryan goes out and into the uh, the seventh inning with an out. I, I thought he was going to get a no-hitter. I thought he had such great stuff. And anyway, when that game was done, he had given up one hit, and uh, during during the uh, clubhouse celebration, I said, well, I'll bet you Scotty's going to top this thing. And sure enough, he went out there, and I think he was, after about the second or third inning, just completely untouchable. There was there were a number of hitters going up there that all three strikes were swinging misses and no foul balls. It was just uh, an unhittable performance. Alan, you've not only caught those three great performances, Bob Cossett just said, you've also hit against Gooden and Darling, and of course, Oida has got the great changeup, also Fernandez. Is there any way you can compare, and people love to talk about velocity and radar guns, even though they're overrated, the speed of a Scott and Ryan versus a Gooden and a Fernandez? Well, that's a tough comparison. The, gu the guns give you the absolute truth, but, but the absolute truth doesn't uh, show the way it is up at home plate a lot of times, frankly. You know that when you've got a guy like Fernandez that uh, has a rising type fastball or a Dwight Gooden, they're very, very tough. Even if their numbers aren't quite as high, maybe as, say, a Nolan Ryan. Now, as of late, uh, the way Nolan and, and Scotty have been hitting their, their spots and, and throwing so hard, uh, mixing with their off-speed pitches, um, you know, it's the combination with those off-speed pitches that makes, makes that fastball great. And I, I've got a feeling what we're looking at is a uh, possibly one of the, the, the toughest match pitching matchups in a, in a playoff series. Dave Smith has been important to this ball club for a lot of years, especially this year. At this point, he hasn't pitched. He hasn't had to really with a strong starting performance. What is his condition right now? He's, he's fine. Uh, he's getting the, the rest he you know would like to get right now. As we get down into probably the last three, four, five games of the season, we'll go back to the regular group, uh, try to get guys pretty much primed up. I know Mike Scott, Nolan Ryan, and Bob Neffer are going to have one more start each and then gear toward the playoffs. Probably Smitty will get about two more outings, maybe three, and uh, I, he's in good shape. Quickly, before we let you go here, Alan, some thoughts on the job Hal Lanier did this year. Boy, without question, you can't under, understate, underrate in any way what Hal Lanier has done. He's come in, uh, taken a ball club that, that frankly, uh, you know, floundered. We, we tied for second, third last year. Uh, but he's, uh, he's come in, brought aggressive attitude. He, he's brought that uh, no -nonsense, nonsense attitude that says, hey, if you guys foul up, you're going to hear about it, and we do, believe me. And uh, he's just brought it, brought, brought it to the surface. Alan, we'll see you next week in Houston. We're scheduled to be back there, and I'm going to try and drag Bob Costas down there to watch you guys tune up for the
the Mets. Let's bring him on down. Let him try to hit these guys. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks to Alan Ashby. They win it today by a score of four to nothing. So for Tony Kubek and for Kevin Barnes, who helped us out with the stats today, I'm Bob Costas. And next week, one of the games on NBC will be the Blue Jays, not the Blue Jays, the Yankees and the Red Sox from Fenway as Mattingly and Boggs battle for the batting title. And some of you will see these same two clubs from Houston, a last look at the Astros before the playoffs begin. And tomorrow, tomorrow, starting with NFL 86 at 12.30 Eastern time, it's a doubleheader. Seattle-Washington, the premier game early, and many will see the Patriots against the Broncos late. So we'll see you tomorrow on NBC, and Tony, I'll see you next week. We'll get a prediction from you. If you can drag it out of me, so long. A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines, serving 13 cities in Asia and the Pacific. United, a fresh breeze across the Pacific.